to Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. Today, the West Texas A&M Buffaloes will wrap up the 2021 season with a non-conference matchup against the Bethel College Threshers. They're from the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference. I'm Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets, and we're glad to have you joining us for today's broadcast. Bryce, this is definitely, it's the perfect way to start your Saturday morning, <laughs> yeah. right? You got yes. uh, your donuts. We had breakfast burritos, yes. by the yes. way. Some coffee, some orange juice, or, and some WT Buffalo or, football. Or if you're ready for brunch, you can do either one. But yeah, no, it's ideal. So the Buffaloes, uh, they are riding the momentum of an impressive win uh, last week. They took out Midwestern State. Well, first of all, you go back two weeks ago, they beat Texas A&M Kingsville, so they've won two in a row. But last week at home, Bryce, they were so impressive. They stormed back down 12 nothing at halftime. They come back and they defeat a very good Midwestern State team, handed the Mustangs their first loss in Lone Star Conference play this season. So with those two wins, the record is now 6-4, and four, and the Buffs will try to put the finishing touches on the season on senior day in front of the home crowd here in Canyon. It felt like last week we saw two different teams, right? <laughs> first, first half to second half. Clark Kent in the first half and <laughs> Superman. After halftime. Uh, absolutely. I mean, down 12 to nothing. Things just weren't in sync offensively. And then whatever the speech was at the halftime, it worked because the Buffs came out, controlled that third quarter as they score 15 unanswered points, take the lead 15 to 12. And then the defense has done what they have done probably the last six weeks. They played extremely well. They're very stingy. They'll break. They'll bend but they won't break, and they didn't break against Midwestern last week. Yeah, they were very impressive, the defense. In fact, we'll talk more about that defense as the broadcast goes on, but uh, JT Cavender, again, Lone Star Conference Defensive Player of the Week, 20 tackles, also had a fumble recovery. Now, Bethel College, they're an NAIA team who does have a very impressive 9-1 and record this season. In fact, before the game down on the field, and the officials are down there and uh, you know talking about this matchup, and they said, hey, guys, this, this is not going to be like a quote-unquote NAIA type of school coming right. up against Division II. Bethel right. College, they've won straight uh, seven straight games, and they're an opponent that we're looking forward to seeing today. They're looking forward to the challenge against a, a WT opponent. Well, they really are. Away over 40 points, they score per ball game. They have over 500 yards on average per ball game, but defensively, they only allowed 17, and so it should be a really good matchup, and of course, what they like to do is run it on the ground. They're very pedestrian, about 450 yards per contest, and so the Buffs got to get ready, lace up their shoes, and get ready to run. So what is that challenge for West Texas A&M today? A lot of emotions for senior day. You want to put a bow on the season, I guess, if you if you will. They still have some uh, something to play for, though, because there's a crazy outside chance, Bryce, that the Buffs could get in the playoffs. So very far outside, but they still have a chance. They come away with a win. They improve to 7-4, and four, and again, of course, in the conference, the sitting very pretty in the conference. Angelo Midwestern, the only ones ahead of them, and, of course, whatever happens with Angelo today, too. And, of course, Midwestern playing UTPB. So a lot of things can happen. There is that outside chance. But more importantly, you'd like to end the season not only on a winning note, but improve to 7-4. and four. That's right. When we come back uh, after this timeout, we'll learn more about Bethel College. We'll also hear from West Texas A&M head coach Hunter Hughes. You're watching college football right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network.
Days are built on mornings. And Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings. Burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Jay Ferg Field here at Buffalo Stadium. And Bryce, uh, let's take our attention now to Bethel College, the Threshers from North Newton, Kansas. Again, NAIA school uh, out of the Kansas Collegiate Conference there. And this is a team that, as we started you know, researching the Threshers, you kind of get a little, uh, not, not scared, so to say, but this is going to be a tough team. It, it really is. And the thing about it is they come in with a record of 9-1. and one. Of course, one conference loss is all they've suffered so far this season. But what's scary about them is the option that they run yeah. offensively. And so we can just – we don't have to go very far back to look at the old Eastern New Mexico teams. When they ran that, basically they controlled, obviously, the run game. And it's not so much the runners that you're worried about. It's the offensive line and the way they block. And so, again, this isn't a big offensive line the Threshers have, but it's a quick offensive line. They've been very effective. Again, like I said, over 505 yards of offense per ball game. Only 85 yards of that is throwing the football. And so, again – they love to be pedestrian. They love to run. Yeah, their quarterback, DJ Sears, runs that offense, the engineer uh, at the quarterback spot. Nine touchdowns through the air, six rushing touchdowns. But the main runner is, and what a great name, Chance Scurry. Yeah. He's the fullback. Yeah. And this guy, over uh, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns, you got to tackle the fullback. Yeah, you really do. And, again, at most teams, obviously, the fullback is not the leading rusher. But in this particular case, the way they have their offense set up, again, with the misdirection and a lot of option things that are happening for the quarterback, the fullback's the feature back, and again, he's been a good one this year. For the Threshers' offense, they averaged 45 points a game, 420 rushing yards. They've scored 44 rushing touchdowns this season, 7.3 yards every time a ball carrier touches the ball for uh, the Threshers. Now, defensively, Bryce, they kind of run a, a little bit of a different scheme where they're going to move people around. They're going to bring some pressure. One guy to watch out for is Josh Seabolt, a linebacker, leads him in tackles with 86, and he has 10 sacks. Yeah, the thing about that is when you're having all that movement defensively, it's hard for the quarterback to get a good read, and that's what they're counting on is that you can't get any keys. You can't really set up your offense. You can't make the audible changes at the line and, and, and change to a different play. And so that's what they're counting on. They'll come in with a lot of different sets, a lot of different players running up and down through the line. Now for Bethel College, obviously you make that jump up, you play a Division II team. They are going to see more talent than they've seen all season long with West Texas A&M. So what are the challenges for Bethel College? What do they need to do if you kind of go uh, a little bit in the uh, mindset of the Bethel head coach? So a couple of things. One, obviously the size with WT, a bigger offensive line. They haven't gone against that uh, that type of offense so far this year. And then the other thing is just the overall speed. That's going to be a big concern is what about the running backs? Obviously, the quarterback with Nick Gerber has some good option availability as well. And then, of course, the wide receivers. You anticipate that our receivers are a little bit quicker than what their defensive secondary may be, and so that's another place that they can exploit. Okay. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, Kent Johnson will have a little bit more information on what is a thresher? And so we'll get uh, Kent Johnson down the sideline after these messages. You're watching West Texas A&M football right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. And you can't overlook them because they run this triple option. And it's been cracking our brains yesterday afternoon and this morning about what we can do. The best way to come out and stop them. It's kind of like Eastern New Mexico. And all of a sudden you're seeing a completely different offense from a defense standpoint. You you really got to try to. You really got to. I don't know the best way to say it. Are you calling him or? Almost a new scheme. uh, Yeah, me too. Way to stop. And they're good. They're very good at what they do. They control the ball. They score a lot of points. If we are not assignment sound, we're get surprised. And get things on us defensively there. Kind of a hybrid of a lot of things. They're a three three kind of stack almost and most of the time they are bringing guys from right, left, middle and <coughs> coverage and Hunter Hughes is walking out of the skies and where they're coming from. So 
the offensive line is going to be put to a challenge with that. Uh, even in the run game, when they you know blitz the gaps in the run game, uh, we're going to have to be able to, to keep our tracks as, as we block. And in the pass game, uh, you know Nick might have to get rid of the ball quick and uh, see what our receivers can do on the outside against them. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium as the seniors being honored and you see them down there. We'll talk more about those seniors. In fact, have a senior tribute uh, video that we'll have for you here in a little bit. West Texas A&M 11 seniors that they just honored. And we're going to get Kent Johnson uh, down on the sideline here in just a little bit. We'll get that report on Bethel College. Again, it's West Texas A&M coming in today with a 6-4 and four overall record, 5-2 and two in LSC play. Taking on Bethel College, a 9-1 and one record for the Threshers. They played last Saturday, had a big 54-21 to 21 win against St. Mary's. And so we're looking forward to this matchup today with West Texas A&M and Bethel College. Again, you look at what the Buffaloes were able to do last week. They defeated Midwestern State 15-12. to They were down 12 nothing at halftime and came back, scored all 15 points actually in the third quarter. And it was a defensive uh, effort. Did a great job throughout the ball game, holding Midwestern State down, a team that averages around 30 points per game. The Buffaloes were stingy all night long, only allowing the 12 points to the Mustangs. We talked about that regional ranking, and let's look at that uh, for just a second. Talk about that. Colorado School of Mines is first. Okay, are we about ready to go down to Kent? We're ready, yeah. All right. Well, let's find out a little bit more about the Thrashers. Let's head down to the sideline and Ken Johnson. Ken? Well, thanks, Bryce. Bethel College is a small NAIA institution located in North Newton, Kansas. How small? Their enrollment is 400 students. 105 are on the football team, so a quarter of the university's enrollment plays football. 67 of them are here in Canyon today. First thing to tell you is the nickname. They're the Threshers. But no, it doesn't refer to a group of people who roam through the heartland of America harvesting wheat every fall. This refers to the threshing stone, which back at the turn of the century is what the Mennonites used to harvest the wheat. It's a large toothed stone which would be drug behind two draft horses and it was used to separate the kernel from the stalk of the plant. In fact, today there is a threshing stone located at the end of Gehring Field at Thresher Stadium on the campus of Bethel University. Now, up until three years ago, Bethel was bad in football, very bad. But three years ago, head coach Terry Harrison arrived. He installed the Flexbone offense, and since then, Bethel has been very good. How good, you ask? In 2019, they were 8-3. and three. Last year, they were 9-2. and two. Today, they enter today's game at 9-1. and one. They have an interesting scenario. They can win the Kansas Collegiate Conference, or they can go to the NIA playoffs, but the scenario for them to do both is very slim. Now, they like to run the football. How much? They have had... 400 plus carries this year for 1,000, or excuse me, 4,559 yards. By comparison, the Buffaloes have ran the ball for 1,900 yards this year. They have outscored their opponents by an average of 28 points a game, 45 to 17. 
Now, we mentioned how much they run the ball. When they throw the ball, which is very seldom, they are successful. They average six passes a game. But of those six passes a game, they get touchdowns at them. They are 29 of 35 through the air. Of those 29 completions, 13 have been touchdowns. Their leading running back is a young man by the last name of Scurry, and he has rushed for 1,100 yards already this year. Their quarterback is DJ Sears. He's completed, as I said, 25 of 39 yards for 13 touchdowns. One of his favorite targets is Mason Young out of the backfield. He only has six catches this this year, but those six catches have gone for 178 yards, which is an average of 27 yards per completion. Defensively, the Threshers are led by linebacker Josh Seabolt. He has a team high 80 tackles, 26 behind the line, including 10 sacks. If you want to throw the ball against the Threshers, watch out for defensive back Trey Palmer. In 10 games, he has seven interceptions. One final note about Bethel College, the Threshers on the front of their uniform where most teams have their nickname or school name, Bethel has Father Abraham. This refers to the song that many of you learned in Sunday school when you were a kid. And the story goes that years and years ago when Bethel was struggling in football, after a game, they sang Father Abraham, and it caught on. Well, then they went through a series of coaching changes. Terry Harrison arrived, and during his introduction press conference, an elderly lady said, Coach, if you win, will you sing Father Abraham? And he said, Absolutely, I'll sing it any time. And that's what they've done. Since then, the school has trademarked the name. They've got it on merchandise, and Father Abraham is symbolic with Bethel College. We've got a beautiful day today, 54 degrees right now. By halftime, it should be in the 60s. Wind out of the south at 20. It's a beautiful day for football. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, Lucas and Bryce will focus on our 11 seniors today, as well as set our starting lineup. You're watching Buffalo Football on the LSC Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. Great uh, report down the sideline from Kent Johnson about Bethel College. Bryce, it is senior day, and uh, for you and I, we, we've covered these players, uh, <laughs> get to know them on a personal level. It's going to be a little tough for you and I today. Guys like Jordan Johnson, yep. Eric Collins, Brandon Blair, Ayrton Payne, the list goes on and on. Before we do our senior tribute video, uh, your thoughts on these seniors. Well, again, you're absolutely right. Just not only what they bring to the program as far as their athleticism, but what kind of human beings they are. What are they doing in the community? And the four you named in particular just right now are so involved in everything around not only the campus, but the city of Canyon as well. It's great to see them out. It's great to see them as mentors to youngsters in the neighborhood. And when I say that, I just mean at flag football games, at soccer games, at things that they're participating in either as a coach helping or just being a referee or just there to observe. We really appreciate what they do and what they will do going forward after they graduate from WT. All right, here's a video for our West Texas A&M Seniors 2021.
seven. Hotling looks left. There's a penalty marker that flies in. He slings the ball in the end zone, and Jordan Johnson catches it for a touchdown, depending on what the penalty is. What a catch from Jordan Johnson. in a defensive line. Larson being chased, and he's going to be sacked by Eric Collins. There you go, Eric. Yeah, he's been waiting for that all night long as the Bucks Bluffs come on a blitz that time. Right up the middle. So And there's Eric Collins that comes through. And uh, officially, now we can say Eric, and that tackle there is in third place all time on the tackles list. Second down and 10. This time to go with Blair. Brandon runs through a tackler. Brandon Blair down the sideline. Touchdown, Buffaloes. And that's just a great block that Brandon was able to slide through. Then he got to the outside and turned on the extra speed. By a field goal. Handoff over the right side. Watch out at the 30, 35, 30. Brandon Blair. Is he going to get there? He is. Touchdown, Brandon Blair. How about 78 yards into the end zone? It's been three big runs tonight for WT Bryson. He broke that one open. For Brandon Blair, the officials trying to get the guys away from him so they don't throw a flag. But again, just a wide opening on the right side that time, and Brandon able to hit it in stride, and then just. Again, makes one man miss. Watch out, he's got the speed. Jared Compton, it's a foot race. See you later. Touchdown, Buffaloes. Safeties were playing up that time. Jared Compton, with one move to the outside, had a, a defender bite on it. Then he cut back to the inside and took off up the middle in a great run. He checks into the game. He's the running back. High snap. They do hand it off to Compton, though. Makes the man miss. 10. Jared Compton spin into the end zone. Touchdown, Buffaloes. What a beautiful run by Jared Compton that time. He does have two interceptions this season. The second down and 10. Compton gets to the outside. Jared at the 10, the 5. Compton, did he get in? It, Touchdown. I was going to say it looked like. They fake it, throwing off his back foot, it's picked off! Picked off by Escalante, and he's bringing it back at the 40, 35. This one is gonna be a pick six, see ya! Touchdown, Buffalo, stampede, baby! Go back to the pressure. are bringing the house though on this punt block. Ayrton Payne blocked the punt. It's loose at the five. He scoops it up and he scores. Stampede baby. Ayrton Payne burst through that garage. We got a new quarterback in here for Texas College and we also have an interception by Ayrton Payne. Payne bringing it back at the 30. It's taken down. So Ayrton Payne, welcome back there number 10.
Welcome back. As uh, Bryce, you look at uh, some of those moments <laughs> through the years. I mean, you get Jordan Johnson making touchdown catches out at Kimbrough Memorial yes, Stadium. Yes. Uh, Brandon Blair, everybody uh, remembers. The big big runs that he had in the final yeah. game at Kimbrough. And so some of the plays Eric Collins has made. You know, Eric Collins has started every game yep. since he came to West Texas A&M. Outstanding. Yeah, as a freshman. And, again, he made such an impression his freshman year. And, again, as we've talked about many times, uh, with date JT Clevenger and everybody else, uh, Cavender, excuse me, but the the fact that he leads quietly yep. by example, but man, what an example he sets! He is the smooth operator. Yes, he is. All right, let's look at the starting lineups for today's game for West Texas A&M. First, we'll start on the offensive side for the Buffaloes, and they'll have starting quarterback Nick Gerber, as uh, he has been Mr. Consistency this season for the Buffaloes. He will run the show. And for WT, starting running back, how about the Lone Star Conference reigning offensive player of the week, Jared Compton, 160 yards last week uh, on 30 carries. Our X-Bar Steakhouse X-Factor of the game, though, Bryce, your favorite, my favorite in terms of just a guy that uh, the big smile you see right there in his profile picture, hoping for a big game for Jordan Johnson. Yeah, I'd love to see it. And, again, you like to get in those short situations where you just need somebody to power it in the end zone. And I would be, I would love to see him again work the option, basically, uh, where he he's the wildcat and he throws a touchdown, the jump touchdown into the end zone like he has in a couple of games past. And so, again, we just love to watch Jordan Johnson play. And you see the offensive line uh, from left to right: Adam Alcorta, Jacoby Lott, Zane Madison, the center; Patrick Gray, right guard; and Parker Hanna, right tackle. And that is awesome, Bryce, to see the Buffaloes. Everybody carrying a flag, U.S. flag. That is so impressive. Today, of course, honoring veterans. They've already gone through the stadium to honor those veterans that are here. Just very impressive. All right, let's look at the defensive starters for the Buffaloes for West Texas A&M on the defensive side. Again, this defense has been lights out uh, lately, especially the last two weeks. Our X-Bar Steakhouse X-Factor of the game. There he is, J.T. Cavender. And, Bryce, he's in the top ten in the nation in tackles. Uh, helped himself out last week with 20 tackles, 15 unassisted, and a huge play at the goal line. Well, absolutely. And, again, that's two weeks in a row because he also had an interception in the game in Kingsville as well. He is stepping up. He is starting to be that vocal kind of leader out there defensively. You talked about Eric Collins starting yeah. as a freshman. JT's doing the same thing, coming in in that same mold, and we anticipate a lot from him over the course of the next several years. Linebacker you, uh, The defensive line, the nose guard, senior Xavier Rivera, X-Man. This has been his best season he's had. Well, and the thing about uh, Xavier is the fact that he's been injured in years past, and so that's limited some of the chances he's had. But when he plays, he is a difference maker. He bottles everything up, and again, great strength that he's able to get past the offensive line and get back toward the backs for the quarterback. Secondary, Ibrahim Kanate at corner along with Tobias Harris, Michael Inouye, and then Ladarian Hudson, number 13, yes. a senior that has played a little bit. He started the year uh, injured, but has played more as the season has gone on, and that's a guy that made a big impact two years ago. Yeah, he really did, and that's the sad thing, again, talking about injuries, and that's the unfortunate thing in college football is those do limit you sometime, and Ladarian is one of those that when we did see him a couple of years ago has made such a great impression and so it's good to see him back today for senior day all right you see the captains making their way on the field brandon blair Ayrton Payne, Eric Collins, and Xavier Rivera. And that is great to see Ayrton Payne on the field injured Absolutely. last week. Yes. It's kind of a scary moment, and uh, he is good to go. Yeah, and again, one of those he was injured, they carted him off, uh, took him for uh, just to be checked out, and, and it's good to see him. And again, like I said, he's one of those guys. Um, my grandsons play flag football. He's one of the referees that's out there along with Jordan. And so it's just wonderful to see them out there. Well, Bethel calls it, and they have, let's see, as the coin toss is complete, West WT Texas won the call, or receive. WT will receive. So Bethel won the toss. They deferred. WT will take it. The wind is going from across the field. It's more out of the west-southwest today, and we've got a ginormous American flag down uh, that the Canyon Fire Department has hoisted up and so that's going to be a good barometer of what the wind is doing today yeah beautiful weather for saturday football you like this early oh, start it, it's different it's quite different and so that's the challenge for both teams obviously both teams are used to uh, playing 
either mid afternoon or yeah. early evening, and so this is an early after early morning game, 60 degrees. Uh, with the wind, it feels about 56, which is perfect football weather. And if you can battle the wind today, then this should be a very positive outcome. We appreciate everyone watching on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Lucas Kinsey joined by Bryce Sheets, our producer today, Jamie Abbott, Kent Johnson down on the sideline. And we're ready for some college football from Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium, the Bethel College Threshers against the West Texas A&M Buffaloes. To kick off for Bethel College, it'll be the punter, Braden Francis, kickoff specialist for Bethel College, back to receive for the Buffs. It'll be Heston Marshall and also Tobias Harris. And we're underway. Kickoff will go over Marshall's head, <laughs> and so the Buffs will bring it out. And this is one where we talked about all the emotions that are going on. Now you got to settle in. you got to play some football. Yeah, and this is what you want to do. You don't want the emotions to be too big. You want to carry with some of the emotions, the intensity that you have with that. But, again, you want it. You know you've got to play 60 minutes, so you've got to control that. Uh, Tobias Harris, interesting, he was back there deep. And he and somebody from Bethel were having a great conversation during warm-ups. And, I mean, uh, agitated. He was already trying to get fired up for this game. All right, so we get a look at the Buff offense. And Brandon Blair will start the first play at running back for the Buffaloes. We'll see if the Threshers bring some pressure. They do. Pass thrown to the outside, caught by Noah Bogardis for a short gain. Good tackling by the Threshers. No surprise out there, Bryce, on the first play, Josh Seabolt, which you love that name for a linebacker. Again, the leading tackler on this team. 86 tackles, and that was a short gain there for the Buffs. Well, Avery Hawkins comes up and helps him out on that defensively as well. One of the defensive ends is able to come over and put pressure on. So, again, not much of a gain, about three on that pass completion. Jordan Johnson, the running back, this time to the right on second down and seven. And Johnson initially looked like he was stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And just like Jordan Johnson does, moves the pile forward, picks up a Buffalo first down to the 35-yard line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was stopped. There really was no gain, and then he just keeps pushing and gets the first down. They go up tempo. Jordan Johnson breaking tackles. Acrobatic. He says, don't call me, Papa. I still got it. <laughs> oh, man, what a nice run into Thrasher territory as they get it across to the 46. So two carries for number 16 back-to-back. -back. Now the Buffs will throw. And Ooh, lucky. Yeah. And that was one that Nick kind of telegraphed, and so the court, the safety comes up. He read it. He was trying to go to Bogardis. He came up. Thankfully, he was over the head of both players. And so, again, it's nice to see the up-tempo because you want to keep the defense off balance a little bit. And like we said coming into this one, they're a defense that shifts a lot, so they try to keep the offense off balance. That was Brendan Sanders, who does have two interceptions this year. He nearly had his third. Second down along for the Buffs. Gerber over the middle. Great catch by Bogardis, and they're in the red zone. Got hit, held on. Big play for the Buffs. Well, Phillip Williams is back there defensively and was upset, but that was just a perfect pitch and catch that Bogardis able to bring in for a first down. All right, we've seen Blair. We've seen Jordan Johnson. Now let's get Jared Compton, the third senior running back in the game right now for the Buffs. They fake it to Jared. And Nick Gerber keeps it, kind of weaves his way back and forth for a nice gain up to the 14-yard line. And great blocking by the Buffs offensive line. And I think he was going to give it to, to Jared, but he saw what the defense was doing, so he pulled it back. It was an RPO. He had the option of giving it to him or keeping it. He kept it that time when he saw another lane and took it and had a nice first down run. So it sets up second down and four on the 14-yard line. And this time Compton stopped. In his tracks, big penetration, and one of the players through was number 92, Mark Lanier, who has 10 and a half tackles for loss. Now, if they give him that one, that's 11 and a half tackles for loss on the season for number 92. John Henson comes up, helps him out. So the three, this is a three-four defense, and so the three guys up front able to put pressure on. And I'll take that back. They switch sometimes from a three-four to a four-three, and so they were able to come up that time and put pressure on. That's that switching we were talking about. Third down and six. Blair, or excuse me, Compton, the running back. Gerber's going to throw to the near side, and he's just off with Kenneth Red Jr. 
The pass thrown uh, too low. And so the drive stalls. Buffs will bring on the field goal team. And so we'll get a chance to see uh, Bryce, a guy that has done a nice job since coming in three weeks ago when they played Eastern New Mexico. Yeah, absolutely. And so, again, a good opportunity here for the Buffaloes as Kaysen Olavada comes in and gets ready to try to try this one from about 34 yards. Blair on the hold. And the Threshers will bring some pressure, but the field goal is up. And Paul Avoda puts it right through the middle of the uprights. Buffs take the quick 3-0 lead, 12-21, still to play in the first quarter. And it's West Texas A&M with the lead over Bethel College. You're watching West Texas A&M football here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Well, welcome back again to Buffs on a nine-play, 59-yard drive. They cap it off with a 34-yard case in Palavada field goal to take the early three-to-nothing lead. The thing that's a little different in this one today, as you're going to the south end zone, you're kind of looking into the sun, which hasn't fully got up in the sky yet. And so, again, that uh, can make things a little challenging. But nevertheless, Buffs take the early three-to-nothing lead. All right, here's the return from the 10-yard line. And the Buffs do a nice job on the special teams. It's on the return for Bethel College. So, so here's the challenge. Patero. Yeah, here's the challenge now for the Buffaloes, too, defensively. What have they worked on this week in this option offense? And so that's uh, kind of option flex, kind of different thing that they do. And so it's going to be interesting to see how they line up and how they get ready for this ground game that the Threshers like to throw. Get on the return, Mario Quintero, number five for the Threshers. First look at this Bethel College offense, led by the quarterback, DJ Sears. Six rushing touchdowns this season, nine through the air. And on first down, it's Scurry, the fullback, that takes the carry. And he goes straight ahead for a good gain up to the 29-yard line. It's just a power run that time as he goes off the center and left left guard. It just lowers his shoulder and is able to pick up about five on that first carry. You'll see Braden Francis, the receiver, set to the left. They have a tight end in number 14, actually running back slash tight end, Cameron Harrison. Look at that scurry at 225. I think that's a little light. <laughs> Closer to 240? Yeah. He gets the carry again. Buffs trying to rip the football out, but it's a good job up front. JT Cavender in on the stop. It's enough to move the chains, though. It's a first down. And, you know, with those, those shoulder pads, he reminds me, Bryce, maybe a little smaller, but Dwayne Miles. It may have running could, back for yeah, the Buffs. Yes, yes. Yeah, he kind of does. And, again, with the way that he is shaped and the way that he runs, again, just power straight up that time. And so... Again, it's interesting for DJ Sears. They all get this play sent in from the sideline. Then about five players look at their wristbands. So it's not just the quarterback, but everybody's looking at their wristbands. And they milk the play clock. It's already down to four seconds. Bethel College is going to take it. No, they didn't take the timeout. They went ahead and ran the play, and Sears is able to throw it. One-handed grab. What a catch. And I was watching the head coach that time, Terry Harrison. Bryce, he was looking at that play clock, and he nearly called a timeout. Lucky for the Threshers, he did not because that was a nine-yard gain. Yeah, Cameron Harrison pulls that pass in. If you call it that, it was almost like a shot put. He was throwing it. You can see why they don't throw too much. They're not comfortable with it. But he just kind of shot put the football out to Harrison. A nice run to pull that one up for the nine-yard gain. You know, Thursday night at the coaches show, we were watching some of the highlights of Bethel. When they do throw Bryce, there's usually a wide-open receiver. Yeah, because they, everybody kind of gets drawn in like the Buffs are right now. Scurry. With another run, this time the Buffs get penetration on the bottom of the pile. 
It's going to be Michael Smith. Well, actually, they did not give him the first down on the last one. Now okay, they so do. then he gets the first down here. So they just needed half a yard and got it on that one. You know, short gain, it just seems like there's, they're not really doing much, Bryce, but they picked up three first downs, and they're moving the ball methodically. Right. First and 10, Bethel College. Buffs lead by a field goal. Ten minutes to play first quarter. And again, here you see they're going to take their time, play clock down to 11 seconds, 10 seconds. This time, flirting, flirting with that play clock. And they get it off in one second. They go to the fullback, and the buffs were not fooled. Michael Smith, Chris Thomas, and also coming in to help out for the Buffaloes was Cole Ulster. Again, linebackers read that perfectly, came up that time, put pressure on, and was able to wrap up the running back. You think Chris Thomas got excited when he saw Bethel College <laughs> on the think, schedule? I think so. I think he is ready to play. Licking his his, he's ready to go. Licking his chops is what I wanted to say, trying to go against this run game. Yeah, he says, Coach, they run the ball? All right, let's go. Thomas, one of the good, good inside linebackers in the conference, one of the best. Ball snapped again right before the play clock runs out. It's an option play. They pitch it outside and running for some big room at the 30 down the sideline. This is going to be a touchdown. Wow, what a big threshers. run that time. Again, the option. Buffs had a couple of chances to make tackles and just kind of whiffed on it. That was Mario Quintero, the man that had returned to kickoff. They get some good blocks. And that's where your adjustments come. How do you adjust? to what they do on some of those option plays. And so big run. Well, because they set that up, Bryce. They set that option up by giving it to the fullback about five times. There's the extra point coming from Logan DeMond. And this one's no good. Hits the upright, and he missed it. So the score will stay 6-3, Bethel College, with the lead by a field goal. We'll take a timeout, come back with the kickoff. You're watching college football here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Well, very nice drive here at Jayford Field by the Thrashers. It's a six-play, 76-yard drive, and it finish was capped off by Mario Quintero's 54-yard run on the option. Again, they get it to the outside, and he gets a block from his receivers on the near side, able to get around them, and then it becomes a foot race to the end zone. The extra point try is missed, so the Thrashers lead this one 6-3 to three with 8.46 left to play here in the first quarter. Yeah, Quintero, Bryce, 5'6", 165 pounds, sophomore from Haven, Kansas. He was shifty on that return. On that yeah, run very, absolutely. And again, it's the speed. That was the difference for him that time. As once he got to the outside, the corner able to turn it and then got picked up one block from one of his receivers and then able to make it a foot race to the end zone. So the bus will see what they do when they come back out defensively to make the adjustments. Yeah, WT... Had a good drive on their opening series. Just couldn't uh, convert the six points. Ended up having to settle for the field goal. And so for West Texas A&M, another look at the offense. Bryce, this season, I think, you know, uh, Nick Gerber, he's done such a good job. Uh, we mentioned it being consistent. The passing yards haven't been quite what no. he had wanted. No. And that's not all on the quarterback. There's there's a lot of things that factor into that. But what have you seen from Nick throughout the season? Well, and I think, again, his consistency has been there. The passing game hasn't been there because just there's some drops and some, you know, just some things the receivers haven't been able to accomplish this year. But, again, he's maintained his composure 
and the consistency he's done throughout. Big hole opens up for Blair. Brandon at midfield into Thresher territory and a big run for the senior from Spring, Texas, Brandon Blair. That looked very reminiscent to his last big run at Kimbrough Stadium when he took off and got an opening. Went off the left side that time. Parker Hanna opens up a hole, and then he gets to the outside, and then it's a foot race from there. They fake it to Blair. Gerber wants to go for the home run. He has Begardis. Touchdown, Buffaloes. 32-yard strike. That was a play option that time. And again, nice fake on the handoff to Blair. Everybody bit. And so he had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. And then Begardis just used his speed to get beyond the, the defender. And just a perfect pass. We were talking about Nick's yes. throwing. And there's a perfect pass right there. Well, and a good job by Noah to get open, get down the field. Gerber with the perfect play through the air. And the Buffs and regain the, buffs. the lead. Answer back in 24 seconds. Paul Avoda with the extra point. It's good. Let's look at that play one more time before we go to the timeout, if we have it, on Gerber's pass to Noah Begardis. It was a pretty one there as the Buffs have the lead 10 to 6 over Bethel College. And we'll, we'll take a timeout. We'll come right back after these messages here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Welcome to MetaDrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Well, the Buffs offense only took 24 seconds to answer the scoring drive from the Thrashers as they go on a two-play, 75-yard scamper into the end zone. The biggest part of that, of course, was the run by Brandon Blair, who has a huge run to set up that 32-yard pass from Nick Gerbert to Noah Bogardis. The extra point from P Pavoda is good. The Buffs lead this one 10-6. Here on the Saturday morning brunch game from Buffalo Stadium as we get set for the kickoff. This game brought to you today by Texas Farm Bureau. As Mauricio Gonzalez, he was one of the 11 seniors honored before the game. He will kick off. And Bethel College is going to have a chance on this return from the 10-yard line. Again, a missed tackle up across the 30. It's a good return for Joshua Moran, number three. And what we're seeing uh, from Bethel College right now are some players who are smaller, Bryce, smaller in stature, but very shifty. Yeah, very, very elusive. It's tough to catch him. That time on the return, the, at the very end, Terrence Clark comes up and plants a hit on the return man and really sent a message there that may, maybe next time you might want a fair catch as he hit the turf, but sets them up nicely again at the 33 yard line. And so what kind of adjustments will the Buff defense make to this Thrasher offense? New fullback in the game and a gain, again, of three or four yards over the right side. That time it was number one, Caden Christensen. And there's no there's no secret, Bryce. I mean, it's fullbacks coming right up the middle. You know, you got to watch for the option. And then eh, about every 10 to 12 plays, sneak in a pass. Well, that's DJ Sears. That's his job, basically, is how can he 
uh, basically elude what the defense is watching. How quick are his hands? How good is he at making you feel like he gave the handoff and instead he may roll out and pass or handoff or option to someone else? And his team can score points. They scored 69. Here's a pitch to the outside. They try to get Quintero again. The buffs were not fooled this time. Eric Collins comes up with a big stop back at the 31-yard line. That's how you have to play it. Everyone does their assignment. You string the play out. You break down and make the tackle. And that's the that's the key too. I think you're absolutely right. What's your assignment? Who are you watching? And so in that particular case, Eric was watching the running back. He stayed with him the entire way. And once the pitch went to him, he just exploded, able to wrap him up and take him down for a loss. Eric last week becoming the number three all-time tackler in West Texas A&M program history. So it's third down and 12 here, Bryce. It doesn't necessarily mean that Bethel College is going to throw it, though, right? Correct. Yeah, they'll go option to the right. They pitch it outside. A big hole opens up, and a big run for the Threshers. Into buff territory, all the way down inside the 35-yard line was Cameron Harrison. And again, a little misdirection. That's the thing you've got to watch for. And so as they go quickly with no huddle, they just got Erickson to the outside, and then he's just making a couple of players miss. There wasn't anybody loaded up on that far sideline, so he was able to get it up into Buffalo territory at the 34. And I think early in this game, that's the one thing that Coach Hughes probably is not happy about, Bryce, is the tackling, a lot of missed tackles. Scurry back in the game. They fake it to him. And Sears will throw down the middle. Dangerous pass. And a flag is thrown. Well, that's not – that really makes you wonder because, again, he was bottled up. He had players on either side of him that time. Ball was overthrown. Ball was overthrown. Nobody caught him or nobody, you know, grabbed him that I could see. And so, again, it, interesting that they're going to call this. There's two fouls on the play. Illegal shift off the pass interference penalties off of that first down. So, so you're just going to replay the down because there was an illegal shift on the offense. Well, and we saw at that time, too, on the shift, it looked like one of their running backs went early on that. And so I didn't see the flag. It must have came on the near sideline because I didn't see it thrown. But I questioned that flag again on the coverage because that, to me, just looked like good defense by the Buffaloes. Well, they had three players surrounding that receiver. Yes. It was a dangerous throw. So... They'll replay the down with the clock stopped. Six minutes, 10 seconds left here in the first quarter. The Buffs leading 10-6. Scurry takes the fullback dive, gains a couple of yards. Jalen Hill, also Chris Thomas, in on the stop for the Buffaloes. Jalen Hill, he's a senior. He was honored before the game. And uh, Jalen, number 91, a senior from Ennis, Texas. 17 tackles coming into today's game. One of those players that has been pretty consistent on that D-line. Well, that's what you like about the three guys up front. They don't get a lot of tackles, but they gum up a lot of the inside play, and that forces teams to make adjustments. And that's what allows the linebackers to fly all over the place and make the tackles that they do. Gain of two for Scurry. So far, he's got four carries, 15 yards, and a timeout will be taken by the uh, Thresher's head coach, Terry Harrison, will step aside, take a timeout, be back right after these messages. Buffs up 10-6 over Bethel College here from Buffalo Stadium. family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? Welcome back to Jayford Field as the Buffaloes lead this one 10 to 6. But the Thrashers from Bethel are on the drive. Watch out for Mario Quintero. He is the wing back set 
to the right. They'll bring him in motion. It's quarterback option as they try to take Sears down, and they can't. He reverses field, slides down short of the first down marker. I think if he doesn't slide, Bryson kind of lowers the shoulder pad. He may have picked up the first down. Yeah, I think he would have too as well. But, again, it's where you start the slide. That's where they mark it. And, again, a lot of times for quarterbacks, they don't realize when they put their hand down to kind of protect themselves on the slide, it's where their hand goes down, and that's where they start it. And so, again, it'll bring up third down and about three. He showed some battle. elusiveness there, didn't he? He really did because, again, he, he does that option so well, and so it does confuse the defense what he's trying to do. Sears, a 175-pound freshman from Houston, a freshman running this option offense. Handoff, scurry, <laughs> just kind of stiff arms, a buff defender says, excuse me, I've got somewhere to be, and that's the 21-yard line. First down, Bethel College. Well, credit the right tackle that time, Ryan uh, Juckermeyer, as he is able to move Hill away from the running lane that time, and that opened it up for uh, Scurry to get through and pick up the first down. And we said we love that last name. Feels like his last name should be something more like a, a power yeah. type of emphasis. Great running back for the Threshers. They pitch it outside. Quintero cut down, and there's LD, Ladarian Hudson. That was a great read that time, too, because he exploded on that play like he had seen that on film, knew where the ball was going on the option pitch that time and trips him up. And, again, watch him explode and just come in and trip him up back at the 25-yard line. Good to see the play there from the senior out of Tyler, Texas. And with that loss, it will bring up a second down and 14. And that's kind of where you take for granted sometimes the film study that these players do during the course of the week. That was just a great example. All right, they'll pitch it to the right this time. Huge hole opens up, and this is going to be a first down and then some. The carry well, by number 14, Cameron Harrison, all the way down to the five-yard line. And kind of in fairness to the Buffaloes on the outside, they had a man there to turn that back in and try to make the play. But the receiver came up and wrapped around him. And th that was pretty obvious. I mean, for me to see it, that's really obvious. Can't believe the officials didn't throw a flag on that. I think that was Quintero that was out there on the outside blocking. So it is first and goal. The Threshers continue to make big plays on the ground as they keep this drive going. This is a long drive for the visitors from North Newton, Kansas. Sears with two, three jukes, and he loses yardage. The Buff linebackers come up and make a good play. Cole Oster read that, did not let him uh, get to the outside, kept him to the inside, and then wrapped him up and took him down. Nicely Oster's had done. a great season. Rice, fourth leading tackler on this team, the freshman from Castle Rock, Colorado. You, you like the, I mean, the, other than Eric Collins, you like the young linebackers. Chris Thomas, of course, will be back. And so you've got a lot of these guys that, as you talk about, linebacker you, this is a good example. They go to the right side this time, and the running back slipped, or that may have been a touchdown for Bethel College. That was number 34 on the carry for the Threshers. Yeah, and that was Tucker Smith, and again, Smith got to the outside, just lost his footing. And so that's the one thing that's interesting about these synthetic turf fields that colleges are incorporating with all the little BBs or the little uh, rubber pieces that are down underneath for cushion. It also can make it kind of slick sometimes. Well, Bethel has been very good on third downs this season, 53% on third down. They send Smith in motion. They're going to throw. Sears in trouble, just has to throw this to the turf as he had J.T. Cavender about ready to clobber him. And so it will be fourth and goal from the five, and they look like they'll bring the field goal team on. Nice job by the Buffs answering on that big run, and then again, uh, nice run. They got the Threshers at first and goal to go, and the Buffs are able to respond and limit any advancement of the football to force this field goal. Field goal try coming for Logan DeMond. It's going to be a 23-yard try, and it is good. So the Threshers add three more points, cut the Buffs' lead to one, and this has been a very entertaining game so far. 10-9 WT with the lead. We'll take a timeout, come back with the kickoff. West Texas A&M and Bethel College duking it out today here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network.
Jayford Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the Jayford Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call Jayford Roofing today for a free inspection. We are Jayford Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed. In the heart of Texas. Lengthy drive, a six minute, 35 minute drive that took, uh, went 13 plays. They cap it off with a 22 yard field goal to make the score 10 to 9. Well, the Buffs get a chance. They will not kick off using that wind uh, coming from behind. Uh, out of the south, they've pushed it behind, and the Buffs have not had a chance on the return. Score 10-9, WT leads by one point. Bryce, a busy day again for West Texas A&M Athletics. Last night was a uh, busy <laughs> evening, afternoon, <laughs> evening, as we had some basketball, also some volleyball. Uh, today, we got football, and then we'll have volleyball and also some women's basketball. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, a busy, busy day here on campus. We'll talk to Michael McBroom about that at the half. Again, as he will be our special guest. And, again, uh, tough for the staff to keep up, but they at least got a lot of things to go to today. All right, Jordan Johnson's back in at running back. He just goes straight across the middle and is cut down. Good defensive play for the Threshers coming in to make the tackle that time. It was number 38, Byron Blassing game. Again, this defense for Bethel College, uh, they've only allowed six rushing touchdowns all season long. They've got some guys that can make plays. Uh, the cornerback, number three, Trey Palmer, has seven interceptions this season. So they're a little maybe underrated because of what the offense does in terms of the numbers. Yeah, they really are. But, again, they've only allowed 17, as you mentioned, per ball game this season. And so they really can stiffen up when they need to. They fake it to Jared Compton. Pass thrown, caught by Jordan Johnson. And Jordan spins. And with that last effort, has enough to pick up the first down. I really like this recipe, uh, getting number 16. Obviously, it's senior day, so you want to get Jordan Johnson involved. But, Bryce, this is what we've seen for the last five years. Yeah, it really is. And, again, that's the special thing about Jordan is when you need a big play, for some reason he knows it and comes in and makes it happen. So first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. Fake it to Compton and look at Nick Gerber. He gets around the edge. And into Thresher territory, steps out of bounds at the 44-yard line. So we've been seeing D.J. Sears make some nice plays from the quarterback spot. Nick Gerber. Well, that's the, the thing is you see Nick on the run here, gets to the outside and really does a nice job to get it in Thresher territory at the 44. So a good drive again here for WT. Can they keep it coming? Look at the Bethel College defense. Yeah, they look like they're, they're playing way back, but they're going to bring a bunch. Pass thrown to the outside, caught by Tyree Tipton. A couple of blockers in front, and he's able to gain yardage to the 40-yard line. Again, what you were talking about, we, we said that they like to do a little misdirection defensively. They really only had one That's player the the up on the quarter. line that time. And that will take us to the end of quarter number one. Buffs with a one-point lead over Bethel College, 10-9 the score. Beautiful day out here at J. Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. We're back after these messages here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program.
quite interesting here at uh, Jayford Field where the Thrashers have their entire offense over on the sideline huddled up as they're talking through some things they want to do offensively. Defensively, the Buffs do too as they have the linebackers sitting on the bench along that D line. They've got the board out. They're drawing up some things they want to make. And it just shows you some of those adjustments that are made in game to try to answer some of the questions that come up. Yeah, Bryce took the statistics here after one quarter. Great offense uh, production by the Buffs, 167 total yards, and they've been very balanced. Yeah, they really have. And so you've got 81 yards through the air. You've got 86 on the ground. That's what the Buffs like to do, obviously. If they can run the football, that opens so many avenues up. And so they've been able to do that so far today. And, again, we got Brandon, Brandon Blair with 43 yards on the ground. Jordan Johnson has uh, 27. And so, again, some nice big runs for the two seniors today. They'll have Jared Compton in at running back. Compton takes the ball, makes two defenders miss at the 25. Throws in his specialty, the spin move at the end. And that's a big run, first down there for Jared Compton. And that just shows you his patience, too, because he could have just busted it and tried to go along the sideline, but he saw what the defenders were trying to do, so he angles it back to the inside, then does it one more time on the spin, and again, picks it up into the red zone. This time Gerber will throw over the middle and too high for his intended receiver, Tyree He knew Tipton. when he let that one go. He had the right angle. He just didn't give it at the right pitch, and so he threw it over his head at the last second just so nobody could intercept it. Had he been able to kind of really set his feet the way he wanted and lead Tyree Tipton the way he wanted to do so, that would have been an easy pitch and catch for Tyree. There's a look at head coach Hunter Hughes, fifth year for the Buffs, 26 wins, 23 losses. They go back on the ground with Compton, and this time the Threshers were not having it. As a couple of guys come in, one of those, number 52, Doug Greider. Yeah, nice job that time because he also had a blocker in front of him, so he had to fend off the blocker and then be able to wrap up Jordan, uh, uh, Jared and take him down for no gain on the play. So it's third and 11 now for West Texas A&M. Four receivers in. One of those is Jeremy Carnbay tied in to the left. Gerber's throwing to the right, and Olison went to the inside. The ball went to the outside, incomplete. Fourth yeah, there down, was still two, goal time. two receivers in the pattern that time, and again, it looked like there was just he threw it to a spot in the end zone, and he had Olson to the inside. He had Tyree to the outside, and Tyree looked back and put his hands up like I was going to the. That's what I understood was to go to the outside instead of turning to the inside. So the results in the field goal try. Yep. 38 yards here on the attempt by Paula Voda. And does this one have enough? It is pushed to the right. That looked like it just came off a little, a little awkward from his foot. Didn't push it through cleanly, and so the field goal, no good. Score stays at 10-9, and Bethel College defensively does the job. Gets a big stop. And their offense comes back on the field. Well, and when WT's offense sits down, they're going to go over a couple of things because they had two nice pass patterns run. It just that was people were going in the wrong direction is really what it amounts to. And, again, they were throwing to a place on the field. That's what Nick Gerber was doing and anticipating, anticipating the wide receivers would be there. Timeout's called on the field. I, I think that one of the officials – over on the far. Oh, they're getting the chain set. That's the problem. Is okay. They, they can't get the chain set, and so that's what they're trying to Mal do. Malfunction with uh, the chains. Our score right now, 10-9, West Texas A&M leading by one point. And so we talked about in that last time out, too, that their offense was all huddled up over on the right side, and so WT's defense was huddled up over on this side. And both of them, they had the boards out and the whiteboards. They were going through some designs. And so it'll be interesting to see what kind of adaptions that they have made here uh, to kind of counteract each other. Watch out for the receivers. Split out to the near side, bottom of your screen, Tanner Galliard. Penalty marker flies. It's a short gain of just one, but obviously some movement. Yeah, Xavier Rivera read that one perfectly, able to come up. And... 
Let's see what the officials are going to sort this one out. Illegal formation offense. Number 72 was lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty. And with this kind of option First offense. Down. Isn't that William Perry, number 72 in the backfield? <laughs> yeah, the fridge? I, so. I believe it is. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's a very good memory uh, for me, anyway. So, yes, absolutely. And so, um, uh, again, that's what one of those linemen has stepped back too far. And so it wasn't up where he needed to be in that particular place. And so that's Cole Herman, who is a guard, actually. So it's unusual to have them too far back. They'll throw. Sears with a perfect pass to the outside as Ty Dillon comes up and makes the tackle after the catch was made on the outside by number 33, Braden Francis. Again, Bryce, very impressed so far with DJ Sears and what he's able to do. And only a freshman. That's what I was going to say. That's the other th factor in this is he is a true freshman. And so how well has he picked up this Bethel offense, this option? And, again, when you come from a system, which I believe he did, come from a system in high school that ran it, and that's what Coach Harrison was looking for was somebody that could come in, adapt to his offense quickly, and it looks like that's exactly what DJ has done. Still short of the first down, second down and five. They go option to the left, and the running back able to gain yardage back to the 25. Jalen Hill nearly had yes. a huge loss. Yeah, absolutely. Jalen read that perfectly. He was anticipating the pitch. But maybe one of the things that's tough for DJ Sears is the fact that when he has to make that decision, do I pitch it, do I keep it, he'll most likely go often with the pitch because he, his job is to draw those linemen up toward him at that time. Uh, Hill didn't have any of it and stayed with the running back. It was Mario Quintero. He comes off the field hobbling a little bit. So they get the fullback back in, fake it to him, pitch it on the outside, another big run. This is going to be a first down for the Threshers, and it's Cameron Harrison. He has been a guy about three times, Bryce, when they've needed a big play. They go to number 14. Well, I'm going to go back to DJ Sears because he sold that option perfectly that time as it looked like he gave it to Scurry. Everybody bit on the handoff, and at the last second he pulls it out, pitches it, again, as you mentioned, to the, the running back who was able to get to the outside and pick up the first down. Well executed that time. Harrison able to pick that one up after, again, just throwing that option. Again, everybody looks at the wristbands. They get the play that's been signaled in and are ready to go. It's a well-oiled machine, this offense. Absolutely. Sears hands it to Quintero, and Quintero running hard around the left side, gains good yardage, well, gets J into the secondary. Jalen Hill is going to say something because he felt like he was grabbed and couldn't get free in order to go down the line and stop the running back. And so he's going to say something to the official along that line. Again, credit this offensive line. They, they're not big, but they, they know their assignments and blocking schemes, and they do them quite well. Talk about uh, Sears, DJ Sears, quarterback. Mentioned he's from Houston, played his high school ball at Cy Ranch. Texas high school football playoffs underway this week. Fumble. Ball's on the turf. It's fumbled. Buffs may have recovered this one. Sears lost a handle on it, and it is recovered by West Texas A&M coming up. Big think, play there for the defense. I think Cole, Cole, yeah, Oster, Cole Oster, I think, was the one that came out of the pack with it. But, again, as he tried to go up, got hit, the ball came free, and there was a big scramble. Cole on the back end of yeah. the pile pulls it away from everybody and comes up with a loose ball. Big play there. Again, the Buffs, they did it last week, got a big fumble recovery. As Midwestern State was about to score, they do it right there and stop Bethel College. In well, that's been the key, I think, for the Buffs this year, too. And our coaches will obviously admit it. If you win the turnover battle, you got a good chance of winning the game. Buffs move quickly here on offense. Compton takes the carry over the right side. Good blocking by that Buff offensive line for a gain of three or four yards. Compton, uh, last week, Lone Star Conference Offensive Player of the Week. And Bryce loved what he, uh, he put out a little comment on Twitter, and he said, this award goes to... My offensive line. Yeah, absolutely. He talked about it in the post-game interview we did with him as well. They couldn't do anything without the offensive line. Here's Gerber. Steps up into this throw. Has a man wide open. Tyree Tipton inside the 10-yard line. And Tyree was wide open as he just found a seam and was able to run up there and pull that one in. As you see on the replay, again, nobody around him. 
and a, the safety comes over at the last minute to make the stop. And Bethel College defensively calls a timeout. They were not ready. Timeout. The other Bethel. thing, Bryce, how about the protection? The I mean, Gerber standing tall, no one around him in that pocket. Quarterback loves that. Well, and go back to the protection you are just talking about. Jordan Johnson peels off, comes back, prevents. There was a blitz coming from the outside. One of the linebackers came around on the end. He steps up, takes the block, gives his quarterback time to set his feet, and then a perfect strike to Tyree Tipton. Talk about uh, West Texas A&M and the other things going on. The volleyball match that's going to be at three o'clock this afternoon. Lady Buffs uh, looking to finish off the regular season with uh, a good game, good match against Dallas Baptist. They won last night on Senior Night, 3-0 sweep over Texas Women's. And it's interesting, Bryce. Uh, we're talking about postseason for all of these teams. I mean, soccer's in the middle uh, of, of getting ready to go into postseason. Cross country, they're already in the regionals, uh, or excuse me, national championships, which right. will be in a couple weeks. Same for volleyball and for Kendra Potts volleyball team. They're currently eighth in the region. Need to uh, work their way up. So they're going to have today's match, and then next week they'll start the Lone Star Conference tournament. Well, and again, it's an exciting time again for the athletes too. As you get to the end of the regular season, how far have you developed? How far can you take your team once you get into the playoff round? That's why they call it Championship November. Absolutely. Jordan Johnson's the running back on first and goal for the Buffs from the Thresher seven-yard line. Johnson is able to get down to the two and a half yard line before he stopped there. Another good Went play. off the right Defense. side of the line that time. Al Alcorta opened up a big hole. They go right back to Jordan Johnson, and he is stopped after a <laughs> one yard gain. And I like what he does when he gets stopped. He rolls forward, and so. If nothing else, he tries to advance the ball on the roll. That time they moved it back a little bit. See if they go to number 16 again. Two tight ends in on the right side. Johnson's got it. And he stopped short again. Stopped at the one. So Bethel College tightening up defensively. So what are the Buffs going to do on fourth down and goal? Do you go for it? Yeah, Johnson's under center. He's going to take it. And they're going to push him across. No well, signal yet. He's in the end gotta zone. Got to be in. There we go. There's the signal. Touchdown, yeah. Buffaloes. Jordan Johnson calls his own number, goes under center, and he got a good push, Bryce. Uh, it, if we get a look on that replay, one of the offensive linemen just got right behind him and said, let's go, boy. Yeah, and so they have one as a slot. And so coming in, making a nice – is that Xavier? It was Jeremiah Stanley was one of them. Oh, Stanley, 72. okay, yeah. So he is, he comes back around and then just takes him and pushes him across to make sure the big running back gets across. Here's Gage Urias. He'll come on and try the extra point, and it's good. So the Buffs get a touchdown, one-yard plunge from one of the seniors honored today. Here's the look at this replay, and look at this push. And right there, they just push him across <laughs> the line, and he's in for the score. Buffs lead at 17 to 10 over the Threshers. We're back after this here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network, 17-9. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. They go on a six-play drive that covers 46 yards. The last one yard of that, Jordan Johnson and company push their way over the line for the score, and that pushes the Buffalo lead to 17-9 over Bethel College. Yep as the Buffs get set to kick this one away. Well, you got to respect your elders, right, Bryce? <laughs> so today, number 16, he needed a touchdown. 
Good push from that offensive line. And it's just so fun. How many times have we seen that in the course of his career? Again, when you need a yard, and actually when you need two, get Jordan Johnson the football. That was his 20th career rushing touchdown. Yeah. He's caught passes, he's yep. thrown passes, and he's rushed for touchdowns. That's not a bad career. And, and in high school, remember, he was a quarterback. Yes. Eagle Lake, Texas. This is an onside kick that goes straight into the hands of Heston Marshall. Did that go far enough? It, it looks sure like it did. did. Yeah. yeah. They had to get to the, the thir 45, and they w rule it down at the 47. I see one of their coaches yeah, the, the officials are talking it over. They're talking it over. They're saying that he caught it before it got – it went five – it went it, ten yards. It was Heston Marshall that caught it in midair, but – the officials, I think, are going to say this is Bethel College football. This is a big call here. I was looking on the replay. And it's Buff football. All right. I was going to say the Buff offense is going out there. What a play. Yeah. Look, here's the replay, Bryce. And again, that's the thing. So does it go? To does he get it? Oh, yeah. yeah, he did. He got it to 47 yard line. Completely caught so off guard. So credit the officials for getting together and talking it through. But again, the sideline official was there. He saw where he pulled it in, and I think that's where he said that's why it's their football. I know Coach Harrison doesn't like it, but nevertheless, Buffs set, set that one up perfectly that time. Yeah, it looked like a, a, a soccer <laughs> pass over there. Yeah, corner kick. Compton on the carry on first down, hit hard after he crosses midfield. Some big hits going on out there. Well, yeah, that's going to frustrate your defense a little bit as the Thrashers are going to come out there and try to put hat on head right now and, and try to make something happen defensively. Compton takes the carry, bounces outside. Jared with a blocker in front. He's across the 30, carries defenders into the red zone. Well, a nice place. job that time because as he goes up, it looks like the the hole tightened up, but he is able to get through. Watch this right here. It looks like it tightens, and then he just squirts out, and then it becomes a foot race once he gets to the outside. He's very elusive as well and able to get that one up quickly. Compton, this time will be taken down. And even though he's tackled on this particular play, there was a good example. He keeps his feet high. In other words, he keeps his knees up trying to step over those ankle tackles and is able to do so as he comes to the outside. He'll come out, and coming in for him is Isaiah Smallwood. Tackle made by Grant Godsey. So the Threshers have some duplicate numbers. They have 14 yes. on offense, Cameron Harrison, 14 on defense. Yes, they have quite a few of those, and so you have to be careful on the duplicates. Short gain by Compton, so it's second down and nine. Nick Gerber will change the play with two receivers split to the far side. And that's where Gerber's throwing, has a man wide open, touchdown! <laughs> Caleb Olison. And that was a perfect throw again. We talked just several minutes ago about how Nick Gerber stays composed, and even though the passes haven't fallen in tonight, that's just a great example of how he moved the safety over well, they were, toward the sideline. They tried side that line. play a couple of times, Yeah, Bryce. they moved the safety order over and so Olsen just goes up and in, and nobody's there in the middle, and he's able to pull that one in for a nice pitch and catch touchdown. Paul Avoda will attempt this extra point. And it's good. Buffs score again, and they lead with 7.22 left before halftime, 24-9. West Texas A&M over Bethel College. We're back after this timeout. You're watching West Texas A&M football here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. 
The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Well, the buffs strike quickly here at Buffalo Stadium here again in the second quarter as they go on a four-play, 52-yard drive. They cap it off with an 18-yard pass completion to Olison, And again, that time, really, it was a nice job by Caleb as he goes kind of on an out and then just cuts toward the middle. The safety was drawn over by Nick Gerber's eyes, and so he doesn't see Olison. And Olison able just on a nice pitch and catch in the end zone, pulls that one in for six more on the scoreboard. It's 24-9. The Buffs now looking very comfortable here in the second quarter. Well, and all phases coming together because the previous touchdown was thanks to a fumble recovery by the Buffs defense. This last one, Bryce, was the uh, Hunter Hughes with the old trick up his sleeve on the onside kick. Uh, absolutely. What a great play. And it, was, and it worked perfectly. You could tell they practiced that a few times in camp. And so, again, that one worked perfectly. Buffs don't show they're going to do it this time, though. Mauricio Gonzalez will kick off. Still a chance to return it, and they will. Joshua Moran breaks tackles. That was nearly a big play there for Bethel College. Still a good return out to the 27-yard line. Again, several players today for this Bethel College team that are making it difficult for buff defenders to tackle. Well, and again, you talked earlier about it, how elusive they are. And so, again, they're not overly big. They're sort of, they got good speed, but what they have is elusive dust. And so, in other words, they can plant their foot and cut back in the other direction. And so they're very good at that. And that's evident by their offense, by the way they run their offense. Getting the buffs, 280 yards total offense so far here in this first half. A first down, the throw to the outside, and it's dropped. Buffs brought pressure. Dylan Mata was in the face of Sears, and he had to throw off his back foot. And the interesting thing so far in this ball game as well as that's the fifth pass for Sears. Again, they're not a team that throws it a lot, and so they've kind of been forced here in this first half to throw it maybe a little more than they want to because the Buffs are able to kind of mix up some things defensively and stop their run game. They still have a 149 yards on the ground, but the buffs have been able. It's kind of like they let him go between the 20s and then stiffen. They go back to Chance Scurry, and Scurry straight ahead is able to gain yardage to the 35-yard line before Gage Smith makes the stop for the buff defense. Well, that's just a nice straight dive that time as they go off of the left guard. That's Marvin Phillips. He's only 5'8", but 325 pounds. And so they just follow him that time. And again, seriously with the drive. If you're Scurry, Bethel, excuse me, with the drive. If you're Bethel College, six minutes, 40 seconds left. You're down 24 to nine. How huge is this third down and two? It's big. Quintero sets right behind Scurry. So tight eye formation. And yeah, and that, whistle blows. So <laughs> that's interesting because that's going back to Michael Anuzzi as he's pointing to movement on the line and the official was waiting and then after the last second pulls his flag because he just kept pointing and showing that there was movement on the line. And so credit Michael on a nice job of helping the official make that decision. So it's a third and two, it's third and seven for Bethel College. And he was up there as a safety blitz, now they flip. Bring Gage Smith up. They stay on the ground, and they're not going to get it. Gain of only two as the X-Man comes up. Yeah, Big Xavier comes up, and just he read that perfectly, able to wrap up. Got some help from J.D. Cavender as well, and that forces a fourth down. Nicely done by the Buffaloes. Okay, we'll, we'll find out, uh, Bryce, if Bethel College read the scouting report on Tobias Harris. Let's see if he gets a chance for the punt return. It's a big punter. It's Brandon Ceniceros. Maybe the biggest punter we've seen, wearing number 96. Good hands and a good leg into this 
kick that will hit right at the 40 yard line. Buffs need to get away from the football. Tobias needed to get away from the football, and he, he finally wanted does. He to sneak in and grab it, you can tell. But nevertheless, the Buffs will take over with good field position. Score 24 9. West Texas AM leading Bethel College, and again, uh, for WT Bryce, they want to finish the season out uh, on a positive note. They want to finish. They have a chance to finish seven and four with a win today, uh, a five and two record in Lone Star Conference play. And again, it's one of these where we look back and we go, "If we could have gone to UTPB and come away with a win, taken and, care of business there, what would the conversation?" And I really be? feel confident. Had that been later in the season, the boss would have come away with a win. It the was just one. it was the second game after a big emotional win, and so. They pitch it to Compton. Back to Olison. Caleb Olison will throw. He's in trouble, so he's just throw it away. That was they were trying to set up a trick play uh, and get Bogardus out on a pattern. So you have that loss, and then the other one that you kind of circled no is Western Oregon. Western Oregon, Western Oregon was the other the one. The ball crossed the line of scrimmage. Western Oregon again was one of those where the Buffs, of course, that that was a battle back and forth in that contest, and you could just tell that they were. T- it was tough to get emotion going in that ball game. Correction. Or, Road the original receiver of the snap is the only one who could legally ground the ball. Intentional grounding, offense. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Loss of down. So the officials come together and they say, in fact, that was a penalty on the Buffs for intentional grounding. Well, they're explaining it to Nick Gerber. He doesn't get it because he was saying the receiver, I believe, came back around. And so he is the one that got the pitch that was thrown to him when he came back around. I guess they're saying he was in within the tackle box, and when he threw it, there wasn't anybody in the area where he threw the football. And so a big loss, second down and 23 now for the Buffaloes from their own 25-yard line. WT leading comfortably, 24-9. Gerber, pump fake, has a receiver down there. It's Begardis, Begardis at midfield, another big play. And that time it was a great route by Bogardus. Gave a little fake to the inside. Nick Gerber with the pump fake. Got the corner to bite. The bad thing about it, Bogardus comes up hanging his right hand that time. And so looks like he may have injured that. Got a stinger or something along that line. As they come over and talk to him right away. But a nice catch by Noah Bogardus. Compton in at the running back. On first down and 10 from the Bethel College 43. Compton uses the speed to get another buff first down. He's out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Boy, you can tell, too. He got the outside. He thought he had a lane, tried to get there, and credit the defense, they forced him out. But had he got by that last guy, he would have been able to get and stayed along the sideline to get in the end zone. Over 60 rushing yards already for Jared Compton, eight carries. Gerber steps up in the pocket, on the run, throws, has a man down there. It's Olison, and he nearly had it. What a throw by Nick Gerber. On the run, pressure all around him, Bryce, and he puts it in a perfect spot. Yeah, Trey Palmer did did a nice job to go up and kind of confuse Olison as we watch here. Gets away from the pressure, steps up, and then Palmer puts his hand up at the last second. And it was almost a great catch by Olson that time. Good effort. Just can come down with a handle. Good effort. That makes me think of the old story of Jerry Rice. That he used to have his dad throw bricks at him, catch those bricks. Here's Compton with a spin move, stays on his feet, bounces it outside, and he's taken down near the 10 yard line. Man, the Jared Compton that we have seen over the last three games, incredible. Uh, he really has been. And again, it's what Coach Hunter Hughes talked about. It's the old Jared Compton. Again, nice move. He gets spins away from pressure there. And Compton's and gonna take a- it, and nobody's gonna touch him. Easy, like Saturday morning. <laughs> I don't know if we're still in, in morning, but that's a touchdown right up the middle for Jared Compton. Again, off the right side of the line that time, and he just takes off and goes and is able to get in. Credit the guys as he goes up behind. Well, Zane Madison actually opens up a hole, and then he just goes through it and able to use his speed to get in the end zone. It's a 13-yard touchdown run for Jared Compton. He is already over 100 yards, 10 carries, 112, and a touchdown. And this is going to be Brady Ellsworth that will attempt this extra point, senior. And it's good, right down the middle. 
everything going the way of the Buffaloes right now as they open up their lead 31 to 9 over Bethel College. We'll take the time out, come back with the kickoff. You're watching WT and Bethel College here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. This is a walk on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field. The Buffaloes go on a six play, 62 yard drive. They cap it off with a 13 yard Jared Compton run. Again, as Luke alluded to, Jared Compton over 100 yards already here in the first half. Buffs lead at 31 to 9. And again, we've seen quite a bit here in the first quarter. Obviously, the Buffs taking advantage of turnovers, but then also on a kickoff, come away with a pop up in the, the ball and able to make some things happen. All right, Mario Quintero will return this kickoff. Again, makes Buff defenders miss, tries to hurdle over Ladarian Hudson. <laughs> and all kinds of stuff going on on that play. <laughs> You think Ladarian's pumped up to watch this or to be a part of this game? Watch this right here. He goes up, and as he goes down to tackle him, correct form, yeah. he sees him jump, so he steps up and twerps him up. The key on that defensive play, Bryce, is Ladarian keeps his eyes Heads up. up. Absolutely. If your head goes down, then it becomes a highlight for exactly. Bethel College. And so that's the thing. Keep your eyes up, and you look at him, and again, he makes the adjustment and makes a nice stop. So now... The Thresher's in a situation they've not been in throughout this season. 31-9. What will they do offensively? Well, they'll keep it in the quarterback's hands, and a good reason, number 30 or number 10, the quarterback Sears with a big run over the left side all the way into Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. So this, even though you're down 31-9, they're not going to start throwing it all over the field. No, they're not. And, again, they know what they have. They play within their means. And so Sears that time just used, again, another option play, had everybody biting on the fullback, carrying a chance scurry. And once they bite on that, that opens up the running lane on the left side. He's able to go that way, get to the outside, pick up a big first down. A lot of confidence in the quarterback, D.J. Sears. They'll bring in Caden Christensen at the running back spot now. 276 rushing yards this season, also a touchdown. And he'll get the carry. Christensen over the right side. Good yardage gained as J.T. Cavender and company combined for the stop after about a five-yard carry. Nice mix of Kane Irvin and Xavier were all mixed up in that one that time as he was trying to open up a hole. Xavier was fighting for the spot, and so good interaction between the two linemen in that particular play. Christensen will stay in as the fullback, and he'll get the carry again and again, run into trouble. Cole Oster comes up, makes the stop for the Buffaloes. Also in on that stop for WT was Samonte Samate as he comes up and helps out. Yeah, in number 44. As well. Yeah. One of the transfer players in this year for West Texas A&M. And that's this is kind of where they shift. He, he's on a defensive end spot that time. Comes up and able to make the push. Two minutes left here in the first half. Buffs lead, big 31-9, third down and five for Bethel College. DJ Sears hands it to his fullback. Not much going. Buffs were ready for that one. Just a great push up front. It starts with that defensive line. Xavier Rivera really just plugging the gap, and that's allowing the linebackers to come up. It really is, and that's where I go back to that little battle he had with K Kale Irwin. And again, that was Irwin trying to win the spot, and Xavier is not giving it up. And so that was a great example where he does the same thing. The linebackers are able to make the stop. Fourth downs this season, Bethel College 10 of 17. They're going to try to make it 11 for 18. Fourth down and three. 
Sears wants to throw to the outside. Picked off. Interception on the outside. That ball floated in the air too long, and Ty Dillon makes the Threshers pay. That's one of those where you practice that a lot. You're with an option team, and so you anticipate you're going to draw everybody up. But Dillon stays true. Again, just floats the pass out there, and Dillon anticipates the pass and able to step in front to pull up the interception. So another big turnover there by the Buffs defense and the offense is going to get the football back We're still with time to go score one minute five seconds to play all three timeouts at the disposal for WT look how deep the safeties are here on this play Gerber steps up throws across the middle another catch for Tyree Tipton he's got some wheels carries the de defenders well, and you yeah, talked. Thirty-six yard line. You talked about that. How deep was the secondary that time? The safety. It's actually three guys playing safety. They were back deep, and so they were back. WT read it perfectly, and so Tyree just goes up, finds an open spot in front of them. Personal foul, number ninety-two, defense. Fifteen yard penalty. We added the end of the play. And so personal foul called on that on one of the linemen. I guess roughing the passer. That's what they're calling. Mark so, Lanier. And so they'll mark off even more yardage on that. But Tyree just goes to a spot. And so Nick able to find him in a perfect position. And then, then it becomes a one-on-one -on -one run. Most points that Bethel has allowed all season long, 31. And that's what the Buffs have matched. In the first half. Yep. They're only lost this season. Against Kansas Wesleyan, 31-24 loss back on September 18th. Gerber wants to throw. Complete on the outside to Hunter Kaufman. Transfer from the uh, Kansas University, and he makes the catch. The Buffs take a quick timeout to save that time. 37 seconds remain. And WT, Bryce, very impressive today. It was a, it, maybe a slow start in terms of what we saw just right at the beginning of the game, trying to adjust to this offense, the, the option that Bethel College runs. But this has been a very good product of Buffs, offense, defense, and special teams. Well, it's defense, what's been interesting about it, too, is what we you, you just alluded to, the adjustments they're making defensively. So that's gummed up the running game a bit for Bethel College. And so when they have to go to the throwing game, when they have to try to throw it, Again, Sears just having some difficulty floated that last pass that Dylan was able to intercept. And then the offense has been very solid today, 214 total yards so far. Or excuse me, five, 376, I'm looking at the wrong line. 376 yards for the Buffaloes, 197 of those through the air, 179 on the ground, good balance again. And so moving in this particular formation, they're able to get up the field and set them up inside the red zone. As you look at uh, defensive line coach J.T. Haddon over there talking with the defense, talking to Chris Thomas. Defense has been pretty solid in this first half. Right now the Buffs offense is facing a second down and one from the Thresher 13-yard line. Just 37 seconds left before halftime. Gerber going for the end zone again, and Kaufman... Great effort, sold out for that one, but just couldn't come up with the catch. And that was, they were on the same page, too. That was a perfect pass from Nick Gerber, just enough for only his receiver to pull that one in. And Kaufman lays out trying to get it in the back of the end zone. But, again, good effort by the Buffaloes. Mentioned Hunter Kaufman, uh, originally from Pratt, Kansas, and so probably knows a few of these guys. I'm guessing he does, yes. On the opposite side for Bethel. They bring a blitz here. Bethel College does. Gerber's in all kinds of trouble and is hit hard at the end of that play. Dominic Copeland, the linebacker. Come out. West takes West Gerber West down for a big loss. Kind of like a ahead. pinball. He went to the left, tried to turn back and turn back into a defender and got taken down, so he's going to catch his breath yeah, quickly this is, this as we watch right here. here. He looks, and then boom, right into the defender. And Let's so. take a quick timeout. We'll come back. Buffs will have a fourth down and 11 from the 23-yard line right after these messages.
Uh, this will be a 41-yard try here for Paula Voda. Buffs try to add to their 31-9 lead. Blair gets the hold down, much better leg into this kick, but it is pushed to the left, so the Buffs unable to capitalize on the field goal. Still 21 and a half seconds to play uh, in the second quarter, and so you're going to get uh, Bethel College will get the football back. And, of course, Bethel will get it to start the second half as well. Don't forget our halftime interview, our Holiday Inn Express halftime interview. We'll be with Athletic Director Michael McBroom. We'll visit and talk about all the activities going on today and around the league. So we'll have that conversation coming up at the half. Buffs lead this one 31-9 as Bethel brings out their offense for the last 21.5 seconds of the first half. We'll see DJ Sears turn and hand it to Scurry. Scurry carries buff defenders for a 12-yard gain. And the Threshers do have one timeout left. But they're just going to let the clock run as they wind the clock. And Sears not really in any hurry to get anything. They're going to be content to go into the locker room here, trailing 31 to nine. So we'll still have, uh, we'll get Kent Johnson. Time. We'll get Kent Johnson down uh, on the sideline to visit with Coach Hughes before we head to the locker room. All right, so Kent Johnson is standing by. Again, the Buffs lead this one 31 on to her. nine as Hunter makes his way slowly down the sideline. Yeah, and again, got to be pleased not only with the offense, but the way the defense has played in this one today, 366 yards offensively for the Buffs. Defense has given up 226 so far in the first half as Hunter makes his way over to Kent Johnson. And again, a good crowd nice start to the first. Yeah, great crowd on this early Saturday ball game. Hunter makes his way in. Let's head down to the field. Standing by is Kent Johnson. Kent. Took a couple series, but your defense appears to have caught on tackling well on the flex bone and your offense moving the football. Yeah, uh, you know, that de it, it's hard for a defense to simulate and get simulated what how fast they can run that thing, uh, that bone offense. So um, it took a little bit to get there. Uh, I still don't know if we've got it. They, they were killing us on the edges, uh, blocking us, and we weren't getting off block. So. Um, hopefully we've made some adjustments to help that right there. Uh, offensively, you know, I think we should have more points. I think we try to get too cute and shouldn't, I mean, just go play. You know, we don't need to do all that, you know, throwing a reverse pass and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and I think that's unnecessary. And we got a good on the uh, onside kick. It was there for us. We took it. We're trying to steal possessions from this team because you want to keep it away from them as much as possible. Well, a strong first half. Looking forward to the second. Absolutely. We'll see you there. That's head coach Hunter Hughes. Let's go back upstairs for our halftime activities. All right, Kent. Thanks very much. And again, 31-9 lead for the Buffaloes. It's Coach Hughes talked about, again, felt like they could get some more points. And, and and really, I think the key of what he just said was trying to steal possessions. And so turnovers have done that. They have forced two turnovers, and the Bay will take the ball away. And then, of course, on that kickoff, they were able to recover. And it wasn't an onside kick. It's a pooch kick that they were. They just timed it perfectly. The Buffs able to take possession and went down and scored. A lot of good things going on for WT in this first half. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll start the Holiday Inn Express halftime show. We'll listen and see the sound of West Texas Buffalo Marching Band under the direction of B.J. Brooks. We'll also visit with Athletic Director Michael McBroom after this timeout. Days are built on mornings, and Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings, burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm, yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast, topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Uh, 
Do we know how? Uh, And welcome back to our Holiday Inn Express halftime show. And again, joining us, Michael McBroom, the athletic director for West Texas A&M. The Buffs lead this one 31-9. to We'll go through some of the statistics and show you some of those highlights from the first half. But a great first half to start out here today on a early Saturday ball game at 11 o'clock. Kind of unusual, but nevertheless, there's so many activities going on. Let's kind of talk, kind of go through the sports a little bit as Michael not only busy locally, but on the national stage as well. But when you look at how the team has fared this year, uh, again, looking to make it seven and four, seems to be everything going in the right direction. Yeah, very, you know, with football, I'm pleased with the board. I certainly would like to have a couple more wins. Sure. We, were, we were close on a couple of those, but the work that Coach Hughes and the staff have done this year, um, I think, has been extraordinary. And I look, you know, I think the future is very, very bright for the football program. Um, pleased with the day. It does feel a little Big Tenish playing yeah. at like 11 a.m. It, it, <laughs> it definitely uh, does, as Ken Johnson will allude to as well. But uh, uh, yeah, volleyball is doing great. Coach Potts and her staff um, looks like we'll go into the LSC tournament as the four seed. Uh, in those regional rankings, so you know, hope is that we'll continue to win some big games in volleyball and get into the NCAA postseason. And then once you make the tournament, anything can happen. Yeah. And uh, men's soccer currently ranked fourth uh, in the region, so I look for them to make it in. Women's soccer, unfortunately, ran up against DBU last night, and I think their season is completed. But man, what a year in accolades and that senior class that Chad has had there. Hannah Kelly Lusk. You know, we haven't seen too many like her, and we're going to miss her on the field. But, uh, you know, player of the year, uh, offensive player of the year, and just a special, special person for uh, Lady Buff soccer. And I could, I, I could say the thing about Shy Roscoe, and all the minutes she's played. So we're going to miss them. But they had a great season, just ran up against the buzzsaw last night. And then both cross-country teams, they're at the Nationals next week. So they're, go they're headed to Florida. I'm excited about what they could do down there. And how much has those programs really turned around over the last several years? I mean, I know the men's team's been fairly strong, but I mean, the, I know Coach is really excited about how, what the women have done this year. Yeah, uh, Jake had you know basically rebuilt the women's program. The, the men have been solid for a long time, nine straight LSC championships. Uh, but the women are on the national stage, and it's really it's pretty neat to have both of them headed off to the nationals. And then again, of course, the – Fall slash winter programs getting underway with basketball taking place today as well. And so there's no rest for the weary. Or the other way to look at that is a lot of fun excitement still going there's on. A, a lot of things going on. <laughs> and actually, you bring up a good point. So on basketball, you know, obviously, I, you know, I think the men's program hasn't missed a beat. And, man, they're certainly exciting to watch. And then what Coach Prock has put together just at the very start of his uh, career here at WT, I think, is is special and the girls are really fun to watch I think playing well and getting more and more confidence with his system so excited about that but to the point you brought I have to take this time to just thank everybody <laughs> I don't think people understand yeah. how many events we've hosted yes. like over the, especially like the last 30 days they I asked I asked Brent and, and uh, Jordan and they didn't even want to know uh, but it, <laughs> but it's you know it's our sports information staff it's yep. our broadcast staff yep. you guys it's all the people in the background, Chance, Chris, all the camera people. Like every, we produce everything on campus. You right. guys do. Kent Johnson and his staff to run, you know, open the events to get them. I mean, it's just there's been a lot. We don't have any home events next week, and I think <laughs> the athletic staff is going to sleep. Take a break. Yeah. Get some rest. Yeah. Well, well deserved. You know, when you look at what's going on, obviously, so many exciting things 
here uh, at WT. And of course, the future looks bright in a lot of different directions. And so talk a little bit about that. There'll be some movement in the conference this year, obviously. And so kind of explain where the Lone Star Conference is and what's going on right now with some of that movement. Well, I think um, it's primarily a football issue. I mean, the, con the Lone Star Conference is strong and membership wise and all the sports are healthy football. Um, needs help because of the memberships and the schedule. But actually, we're about to do a deal with uh, the Great Northwest Athletic Conference that will bring their three football schools into the Lone Star Conference as affiliate members. So we'll have 10 LSC football schools with a perfectly balanced you know, nine-game conference schedule that starts in week three. It aligns perfectly with the, with the Rocky Mountain schools. So weeks one and two will be open. And it's really kind of the best schedule we've had in, in maybe a decade. Uh, I'm excited about it. Our, our uh, football team will get a chance every year to go to the Northwest on a trip, whether it be Oregon or Central Washington or Canada, which I think are great. And then those schools will get a chance to come to Texas and New right. Mexico. And, you know, from a travel standpoint, it's a little more expensive. Uh, but we will have a full schedule of 11 D2 games, and that helps everybody in the Lone Star Conference. So, I've, you know, I think we're fine. Um, but... And College that, athletics has changed. It does. It changes a lot, obviously. But the thing, of, and that's one of the things, not only are you preparing, obviously, for games getting ready in the spring and everything else, but you've got to look a year, two years, three years ahead just to see how things line out. We do. And, uh, the, you know, the conference leadership looks at as we lose a member or gain a member, we are looking at schedules two, three years out. Um, will we run divisions? What do playoffs look like? What's the right access ratio to get into the championship? So there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, Jay Perner in the conference office does a phenomenal job kind of leading us, and we have some great young, uh, great young, I'm old, uh, <laughs> great new ADs uh, in the league that, um, you know, it's exciting to work with. Uh, also some, some people that I've been able to work with for a long time. It's kind of weird that I'm the kind of the old guy in the room now. But <laughs> well, you've been, what been here a while, and yeah, so yeah, it, it, time does keep going on regardless of how we look at it, uh, nevertheless. But again, things are really shaped up nicely for the conference, and so and that does mean on the horizon not only just football, but for everything in general, everything should be pretty stable. Yes, I think so, and and obviously, you know, at West Texas, our goal has always been to have have everybody competing at the highest level we can in division two i think we're there um year in and year out uh that's a tribute to coaches and staff and um in terms of like the postseason aspirations that we have um, we have a lot of people on our staff that are part of the regional uh, selection committees right. that help that i think really push the lone star conference uh and the the level of play in the conference across the board in sports is some of the best in the country. I mean, it's truly phenomenal. And we've talked about the fall and obviously sliding into to winter sports as well. And then the spring sports, too, when you look at strong baseball program, softball program that won the national title a year ago, they should be fantastic again this year. And so it just continues to build on itself. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, around here, it's just uh, the fall sports hand the baton off to the winter sports, then the winter sports hand the baton off to the spring sports. Same expectations for every program here. You know, we're talking about next week like we have a week off. We don't. We <laughs> we're actually going to go down to Lubbock. We have right. a huge men's basketball game right. with Lubbock Christian on right. Thursday night, and, right. you know, we're headed down to hopefully um, support our guys and bring back a win from Lubbock. Yeah, very important indeed. You know, the other thing, too, you and I talked last spring a little bit. One of the things that has come into college athletics, obviously, is the transfer portal and some players took advantage of that last year and left but at the same time when you and I had the conversation you said the neat thing about it for WT is we get so many people that want to come here and play and it's kind of you can almost go through and kind of pick who you want to try to add to your program either high character high caliber yeah. something along that line yeah and look you know people can complain about the transfer portal I mean I get it but you can sit around and complain or you can adapt and, right. and get stronger and figure out how to use it to your advantage and I think uh, that is an advantage for West Texas. Like, this is a great place to come play. It's a, it's a platform. You're on a stage. We have great alumni support, community support. Um, it puts, you know, we, it puts the pressure on schools to deliver a great experience to students. And I think we do that academically, socially, athletically here. And so, yeah, if, if one, uh, if a student chooses to leave, you know, we wish them the best, but we also sure. know that there's going to be somebody else uh, coming in that, you know, potentially would make us better. It, I just always think everything is a chance to get better. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so the thing is, is that we want to uh, appreciate what's taking place as they're honoring veterans here today, but we want to appreciate what you and your staff do as well because of the quality programs that are put out there and the fans can come and watch and so and enjoy here in Canyon and uh, take advantage of that when you can. Well, and thank you, but we wouldn't be here without the veterans. That's exactly so. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Michael McBroom joining us on the Halftime Show. 31-9, to 9, the Buffs lead this one. This is the Holiday Inn Express Halftime Show. We'll visit with Ken Johnson right after this. Excellent. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. Well, as we continue with the Holiday Inn Express halftime show, Kent Johnson joins us from down on the field. And again, just the nice first half for the Buffaloes. Well, I, it was. It took a few series to yeah. catch on defensively to what Bethel does. They are a very difficult team to tackle. Seems like every running back they have, just before he gets hit, he spins. And that elevates the difficulty. But I, I like offensively what the Buffaloes have been doing, mixing the run and the pass, going uh, vertically with their passing. Yeah, 366 yards on 38 plays for the Buffaloes. The other big thing about it, I think, in the first half is what the defense has done, forcing a couple of turnovers. They did the special kick or onside kick. It's not an onside kick. It is an onside kick where you kick it in the air and the Buffs recovered it. And like Coach Hughes said, we want to limit their possessions. Yeah. And so you do that by takeaways, and they have three of them right there. Well, you keep Bethel off the field, and Bethel can't rush and score. You know, right. you look at the stats. They've run for 207 yards. That's exactly half of their per-game average. So they're on target but they've only been in the end zone once. That was early. The other thing the Buffaloes have done, and six passes isn't a lot, right. but that's how many times Bethel normally passes in, in a the game. game. The Buffs are putting Bethel in passing situations, and that's a good thing. And they're uncomfortable because they threw that one interception that way. They've only completed two passes in that first half. And so, again, when they make the adjustments, everybody's going in to make the adjustments here at the half. I mean, they were doing – it was interesting. We commented they were doing it on the sideline. When there was a timeout, you saw all of Bethel's offense – over they were huddled up around a whiteboard same thing for WT's defense and they were all scratching things out and so they're making those in-game adjustments they kind of finalize those here at the half so it'll be interesting to see what comes out it's never too late to learn got to give out a shout Jared Compton his final oh, game was land. a Buffalo 100 yards in the first half and yeah what a what a quality person the Jordan Johnson on the Wildcat takes it in for a score some of our favorite players again just love to watch the way they're playing in this it's been one. a lot of fun we got another half to go yeah we absolutely do and of course we want to take uh, a break we will do so momentarily before we take a break let's kind of take a look at some of these st statistics as you talked about Jared Compton 10 carries 100 yards in the first half and a touchdown Brandon Blair only has one carry it's 43 yards but man that was a big one that was that two play yeah. drive where they went in and were able to score on the following pass play Dick Gerber today 7 of 11 very efficient like he was last week against Midwestern 131 yards through the air two touchdowns down so far. Noah Bogardis has one of those. The other one is Caleb Olson. And again, there's a, those, of those four passes he's missed, he hasn't missed by much. It's just some timing that hasn't been there. Well, and, and so many times when Gerber throws an incompletion, it's a throwaway. You know, it's Right. He's not trying to hit. He's, no, he's right. preventing a sack. Right. So it, those go as incompletions, but they're, they're smart plays. 
defensively. Chris Thomas, who we thought would have a big game today, leading the way. He and Cole Oster, the two linebackers with five tackles each. And again, we, we see Cole Oster kind of step up in this one today. And another senior that's having a big explosive day, Ladarian Hudson, who not only does he have four tackles, but he also on that kickoff had helped the player do a somersault and making the stop so he couldn't advance on that as well. Yeah, again, it's just a, it's been a team effort in the first half. Need to continue in the second half. Yeah, we absolutely do. What we want to do is take a timeout. We'll do so momentarily. And let's see what else can we take a look at as we're trying. Time of possession, believe it or not, who do you think has the time of possession advantage? You know, my gut feeling, and I'm not looking at the stats here, I would say Bethel because of their running. But the buffs, you know, Bethel did not get a possession on the offense, on the onside kick. So I bet it's WT. Well, it's, it's, it is Buffalo, though, believe it or not, because they had those two long drives. Yeah. One was a six-minute drive that they were able to capitalize on. Another was a 329 drive as well. And so they were able to take advantage of that, and they lead the time of possession. We'll be back with more after we take this break as we continue with the Holiday Inn Express halftime show. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physician Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Doors and windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372 4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Well, welcome back to Jay Ferg Field as the Buffaloes lead this at the half, 31 to 9. Bethel will be the recipient of the kickoff. The bus will be going from right to left or from the south end to the north end here at Jay Ferg Field as we look at some of the highlights from the first half. And, again, there's a fumble recovery by the Buffaloes. That set up a score by WT. And, again, taking advantage of those. And then, of course, Nick Gerber back to pass. Yeah, he's and looked good, Bryce. He's looked really good. 7 of 11 throwing the football in that first half for 131 yards. Actually, they have Jordan Johnson, 3 of 5 for 66. I think they got that mixed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Jordan didn't throw the football, but nevertheless, uh, passing he wise. Made, he made before the game's over, though. Yeah, yeah. Passing wise, the Buffs have played well. All right, Mauricio Gonzalez kicks off, angles this one to the far side, and it does go into the end zone and out of the back. So Bethel College will get the ball to start this third quarter. Bryce, offensive adjustments for the Threshers. Well, I think the thing is, they, like, as Kent kind of alluded to, they've had to throw the ball a little more than they normally do in a ball game. They've thrown that here in the first half, and so they're probably going to make some adjustments there. And so the other thing that the Buffs have done a nice job is they've stayed – to the outside, they've forced everything. They've funneled everything to the middle. They obviously, on these options, they want to get to the outside because then they can turn it up field and feel like on uh, they have the advantage on the matchups there. So that's probably some of the things they've done to adjust here in this at the end of the first half. All right, so we'll see the talented quarterback, DJ Sears, along with his fullback, Scurry. And the ball's on the turf again. It's fumbled, still loose. And I think Sears may have been able to jump back on it. Dangerous play as he was trying to pitch it, but the buffs had disrupted the play so much. So, and again, we talk about these seniors today. Eric Collins, the linebacker, on that particular play was 15 yards away from the from the, the ball. In other words, he was way out here on the near side. He saw something in the setup that time. He played so wide because he was forcing that back to the middle, trying to, again, funnel it to the middle, and that's where that miscue came about. 
So a loss on the play of four yards, second down and 14 ball on the Thresher 21 yard line. Just starting the third quarter at Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. Glad to have you with us for today's broadcast. And this is a pitch play that's going nowhere. A penalty marker is thrown. Xavier Rivera is down in the middle of the field. Not sure, I think this is gonna go against Bethel College. The carry to Quintero for a loss of one. Here's a replay. It kind of depends on what the oh, penalty that, is. I, I saw it right there, Bryce. It's going to be an illegal chop block. And that one is one that Hunter Hughes is not very happy about because the guy that uh, was blocked is down on the turf right now, Xavier Rivera. And so we'll see the uh, with the loss, obviously, it'll bring – We'll, we'll see what they decide to do on this penalty, whether the Buffs take it or not. And if that is the penalty, that's a 15-yarder. So we wait to see as they continue to attend to Xavier here on this one. And again, you can see what kind of effect he has on the team. I mean, Eric Collins is right, was right there by him, checking on him to see how he was real quick. And so, again, and like I said, we've been interesting here. We, just in the first three plays, we've seen some adjustments that BT's done defensively. If they've kind of taken people, their linebackers in particular, a little wider than they do normally, again, trying to funnel everything toward the middle. Yeah, waiting on the uh, referee to make this call. The officials today, your referee, Jason Hickey. Umpire is Samu Edison. Head linesman is Nicholas Waring, field judge Todd Morris, line judge Juan Dominguez, your side judge Rex Rose, back judge Colby Walker, and center judge is Barrett Furman. And Xavier looks like he's going to get to his feet, and so what does it kind of tells you what he means to the club when the head coach is down there trying to help him up Xavier, a little bit. Big 290-pound uh, defensive line from Abernathy. He's even getting help, some help from his teammates, Jalen Hill and Michael Smith. So we're still waiting for the officials to kind of sort this out. This has gone all along. Obviously, they're waiting for Xavier to get up, but usually officials don't wait. They call that right away. So let's see what the penalty is. Chop block, offense, number 72 and 50. Penalty decline, third down. And we kind of thought they might decline the penalty because of the loss on the carry that time, and so they'll force it to be a third down and long and decide not to push him back and give him an extra down. So now Bethel College in a third down and long situation. Two receivers to the right. Quarterback Sears will keep it, and he's taken down Eric Collins, the first man there, and then Michael Smith cleans it up. Good play. Eric Collins is really starting to get a, a nice uh, read on this option well, offense. Well, and that's what I mean. He's playing further out. We see Eric go down as a linebacker. He'll go down on the line of scrimmage a lot and line up to make it a 4-3 instead of a 3-4. And so what he's been doing on the adjustments in this half, he'll slide further to the outside. As he steps up, he's forcing that play to the inside, and that's what he did on the quarterback that time for only a couple-yard gain, makes it third and 11. So that forces a punting situation, Tobias Harris. This would be a good time to see Tobias. It would, and here's off. Brandon Ceniceros, big 96 again with the punt. This one not quite as good. Still gets across the 50-yard line, out of bounds near the 45. So the Buff offense will have great field position, leading 31-9. First chance for the offense. Yeah, let's see what adjustments they've made as well. And again, very efficient in that first half, 366 yards in the first half, and again, 197 of those uh, through the air, but 22, uh, 22 carries for 169 yards with Jared Compton already at 100 yards in the ball game. So that's impressive to see. Kent Johnson with the text, Bryce, the attendance today, 5,728 fans. Good crowd on hand for the final home game for the Buffaloes. Compton takes the ball, good blocking up the middle for a gain of about three yards. One of the players in on the stop for Bethel College, linebacker Ryan Clark. And again, the Buffaloes able to try to mix in the run and the pass here in this early set. They want to get Compton going once again. So he's able to pick up three, goes off the right side between 
Zane Madison that time and Jacoby Lott. Thresher showing pressure. They bring the linebackers. One of those linebackers is Josh Seabolt, and he stops Jared Compton right in his tracks. You know, you talked a lot about Josh Seabolt before we started today, and really we haven't heard his name too much, which is that means that the offensive line is doing a good job of finding him and taking him out of the play. Yeah, when the offensive line, when, when they're able to push the front three or front four back, makes it difficult for those yes. linebackers to roam free. They can't run up. They've got to retreat a little bit, and so Buff's been able to take advantage of that. Here's a third down and seven. The Buffalo's first offensive possession in this second half. Good protection for Nick. Wide open receiver, Jeremy Carnbay. And he's able to get that first down. I was wondering if he was going to start going <laughs> yes. up the field. Come on, Jeremy. Yeah, you got to get the first down. He was at, he got a nice, it was a nice completion. And he needed to get one more yard. And he started running along the sideline here, as you see, instead of going up to the north end. So he comes to the near side, then turns it, got pushed to pick up the first down. Jeremy will be back next season. Talented tight end from Portales. Gerber throws to the outside this time. Bogardis makes the catch, spins upfield for a nice seven, eight-yard gain there. And that's one of the things I think the adjustments started in the second quarter a little bit. They felt like they could exploit the secondary a little much, and so they're trying to take advantage of that little out routes. And then once you kind of bring in the safeties, that opens up the middle for those longer pass plays over the middle. This is Jared Compton, again, makes the first defender miss, uses the speed outside across the 30-yard line. And that is one thing I think Bethel College is struggling with, Bryce, is just defending players like Compton, uh, even when Nick Gerber gets a, a, around the outside, just the speed that WT has as a team. Yeah, and that's a big uh, advantage for WT from that standpoint because he, that time he goes up, he has a defender there ready to take him down. He kind of hits his helmet with his hand and then just uses his speed to get the outside to pick up the first. Great game for Compton today. This is Olison catching the screen pass. Great blocking ahead of him. Give credit to Keneath Red Jr. on the outside. Tyree Tipton, the slot receiver. And you talk about wide receivers uh, known for being the prima donnas and the pretty players. That's some great blocking upfield. Look at this replay. Yeah, that's the thing to gauge the wide receivers coach is going to be happy about is the good blocking right there. That opens up a hole for him to run through. And, you know, that's helping your teammate, helping your team out. And, again, they'll reciprocate that later on. So another first down for the Buffs. Bethel College comes through. A little bit of a head start there. Zane Madison, again, you can't. Here, here's the replay. Yeah, you can't really. Did the as buffs they come move through, first? That's what they're talking about. And so coming through that time to go after the quarterback, Offside, defense, number Mark 45, Lanier. Five-yard penalty, first down. So it was the defense that was offside. Mark Lanier, and so he doesn't hear the whistle, so he's just going to keep going for the quarterback, and that's what he's, you know, trained to do is just keep moving forward until you hear the whistle. Another player having a good game, Bryce, is Patrick Gray, the right guard out of San Antonio. Compton trying to do his Barry Sanders impersonation, but is stopped for a loss, loss on the play. He did he had two or three Bethel College defenders right in his face, unable to do anything. Well, and again, that time I think the Buffs can still pick up a first down at the one-yard line, and so second that'll bring up second, well, second and goal, I guess they say. I thought the way they have it marked, it looks like they can pick it up at the one. So we'll see. Clock continues to run. Under 10 minutes to play, third quarter. Buffs lead 31-9. Jordan Johnson, the running back. Johnson will get the carry. Big hole up the middle, and that's another touchdown for the Buffaloes. Second touchdown today for Jordan Johnson. It's almost like Bryce, he was waiting. Does anybody want to come try to tackle me? Yeah, I guess it's kind of like I'm waiting. For, oh, then we got a little extra curricular activity going on. I think that goes back to that play on the offsides a little bit ago because Madison is the one coming out of that, and he was the one that was. Yeah, there's two flags uh, on the field after the touchdown was scored. Here's the replay. And watch Jordan right there. Boom, just a big open hole. And so for him, that's an easy jaunt. 
into the end zone. Yeah, this offensive line for WT, they are enjoying today's game, Bryce. Yeah, they really are. And, again, I think they were hoping that this would be an opportunity to use a little more of the run game today and that they could open up some holes for the running backs to take advantage of, just like that from Jordan Johnson. Scores 37-9, waiting for the officials to make the call. And head referee Jason Hickey. We think After he's... the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 92 defense. That penalty be assessed on the kickoff. Touchdown. And again, that goes back to he, Zane and 92 uh, Mark Lanier. Lanier. That's number 92's were... first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. It's his first, un first unsportsmanlike. He also had the personal foul on the late hit. Right. But right now you're seeing some frustration uh, coming from the Bethel College players. Get a big run by Jordan Johnson. And this will be Mauricio Gonzalez that will attempt the extra point. It's good. And the Buffaloes add one more point to their lead. 38-9 the score. West Texas A&M over Bethel College. We're back right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Media timeout. Welcome to MetaDrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our Health Mart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Well, welcome back to Jayford Field. The Buffaloes go on an eight-play drive that covers 55 yards. The last seven yards of that, a Jordan Johnson run into the end zone, the extra point from Mauricio Gonzalez. We've had we had three or four different kickers today. That's right. I'm trying to remember, we're trying to remember how many different kickers we've had. We've had four different kickers in this game today for the Buffaloes. Everybody getting a chance here on the last home game of the season to get in the act a little bit. Buffs lead at 38. To nine over Bethel College. Bethel comes in with a record of nine and one on the season, and the Buffaloes trying to give them their second loss on the year. This game brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau. As West Texas A&M wrapping up the 2021 season. Again, as the day goes on, Bryce, we will definitely be watching the scores from around the Lone Star Conference Midwestern State against UTPB. That game in Wichita Falls. Uh, Texas A&M Commerce, I believe, is at home against Eastern New Mexico. Angelo State, they're the team right now in those region rankings. Yeah, that's number two, pretty. that's surprising to me. And they're, and they're taking on Texas A&M Kingsville. And Coach Hughes on Thursday, of course, he's you know has a, a, an interest in what happens and what goes on. But he felt like Kingsville is playing some good football. Kingsville defeated UTPB last week. Right. And so the Javelinas uh, will try to spoil things and get a win over the Rams today. Well, again... As Angelo is the sitting at the number two spot in this one, as that one's kicked away and out of the back of the end zone. So Colorado School Mines, the number one position. Of course, we saw them here. Again, that was a good ball game. The Buffaloes uh, were in it much the first half, and then the Mines used their running game to kind of make things happen in the second half. Angelo, of course, the Buffs beat them earlier this season. Augustan is number three. Bemidji is fourth. Western Colorado. It's been a while, but WT went up to Western Colorado several years ago and came away with a big win in that ball game as well. They have a much improved program as they're eight and one on the season. Central Washington, um, and I believe it was it Angelo that beat them earlier this year, went up to Central Washington. Look at Scurry just dragged the pile all the way up to the 38 yard line. That's going to be a first down for Bethel College. That was a frustration run right there for Scurry. Coming up to help put pressure on him, take him down A.J. Magruder, who's filling in for Xavier Rivera. 
in that nose tackle position. Yeah, AJ, an uh, offensive lineman up until today, I guess. <laughs> well, he's filling in. He's sliding over, doing and, a nice job. And you know, Bryce, he's 6'2", 315 pounds, and so let him get in there and give it a shot. Option to the outside, the hole opened up, but the runner slips down as JT Cavender comes up and makes a tackle. And one of the things the Buffs have adjusted to, they are getting to the quarterback, uh, number 10, DJ Sears, quickly. And so that's some of the adjustments you know, like you just talked about. And so what that means is he has to get rid of it faster, and so they don't get to run the option to the, its completeness. That's how fast this is. And so as soon as he's there, he has to get rid of it quicker than he normally wants to. That was Jalen Hill. The other thing you do when you play these option teams, <laughs> and the defensive line coach JT had, and I know he was saying this all week, get a chance to hit the quarterback legally, you do it. Yeah, because you want to make him feel, if he's going to run with the football, you want him to feel it a little bit. Here's well, yeah, Scurry's making a couple of the buff defenders feel it on this short run as he gains yardage up near the 45. They mark him down at the 44-yard line. He took I, on Chris Thomas, and that time Scurry won the battle. Yeah, Scurry's six feet. I think there's no way he's 225. He's got to be about 245 at least. And again, good runner, but he's a north-south runner. He's yeah. one of those power backs that just goes up the middle. So break down and hold on. Third down and four. As Bethel College has... One receiver split to the far side. Option to the left. Cavender comes in, makes the tackle. The ball popped free and went out of bounds. That was Mario Quintero again on the uh, option pitch. And man, did number 45 get there in a hurry. And, and they do. And again, that's the adjustments that Bethel's going to have to make is the fact that, that once the quarterback has it, he takes a couple of steps, pressure is already being put on him. And so he has to get rid of it on the option much quicker. So Bethel College will punt. and so This is a different punter if this is. is who's punting. And no disrespect to Brandon Sinisteros, but this punter looks a little quicker. And this punt is blocked. The Buffs blocked the kick. And then it will be uh, downed. Just on the other side of the 50-yard line. So somebody got through there, got a hand on that football, affected the punt, and the Buffs well, are going to have the football. Well, Ayrton Payne, one of our favorite players. Let's see who gets in there and it's coming in. I know Ayrton was one of those that was back there, and that's his specialty. They're giving him high fives on the near sideline. I'm going to say that's Ayrton Payne that got in that time. Great job for the Buffs special teams. We'll and step that's... aside, take a media timeout, 6.47 to play, third quarter, and the Buffs leading big, 38-9. to We're back right after this. Cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? Well, another great defensive, or I should say, special teams play by the Buffaloes as coming in that time was Ayrton Payne to block the punt of the new punter. And the Buffs able to take advantage of a great field position as the offense will come out and work it from just inside Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. And until that play there, Bryce, uh, Bethel College had gone the entire season, no punts blocked. So some things, again, that WTA doing today. Well, and, and the thing in Bethel knew this was going to be a tough fight coming into this one today, and so this is to help make their program better. And WT is not is taking advantage of every opportunity. New quarterback. Yep, Caleb Ariola, the quarterback, the lefty junior from Chino, California. His first pass sales incomplete. And so we'll get a chance to see Ariola, who has not played much this season, just a few games where he's come in in the fourth quarter. Played the second half uh, in the Buffs win over Texas College. And he has a strong arm. 
player that uh, his junior college stats are pretty impressive. This is a handoff to Compton. Somehow he got out of the pa uh, pack in the middle, and then he slips down just across midfield. So a short two-yard, an impressive two-yard run. That was a lot of running for two <laughs> yards that time, but he went to the left. That hole closed, so he bounced it back to the right, started to go up, and then felt like there was more open space further out to the right, tries to go that way before he just loses his footing. And look how far off the line they're playing right now. Last time they did that, the Buffs took advantage. Here's Ariola. Going to sling this ball to a wide open receiver, and that is a touchdown for the Buffaloes. And that's Markel Stevens Peppers that broke free. Well, they had back Denzel Dixon and Trey Palmer. They just got mixed up in coverage that time. Markel Stevens Peppers was wide open. Credit Ariola. He escaped the pressure, rolls out to his left has time to set his feet, and then just kind of points where he wants Stevens Peppers to go, and that's where he threw the football for the completion. So that one worked out for a huge touchdown pass. Caleb Ariola to MSP. The extra point from Brady Ellsworth is good. WT cruising today at home over Bethel College. Here's a look at that last play, Bryce. And again, he steps up here, rolls to his left, and then just launches it because he was so wide open. That's one as a quarterback, you're going, okay, i got to make sure I don't overshoot him here. <laughs> I want to make sure I get it to him, and he does. And that's good for the touchdown. All right, we're back with the kickoff after these messages here on the LSC Digital Network. Hey, Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member to guide you every step of the way. That is the Jay Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call Jay Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are Jay Ferg Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed. And here's the kickoff. It goes out of the back of the end zone. Buff Sparkell Stevens Peppers able to take advantage of a nice pass. That kind of a busted play defensively in the secondary. Yeah, it was because the two guys that were back there defensively were Denzel Dixon and Trey Palmer. They just got confused. Both of them went on the up man, didn't stay with the deeper receiver, which was uh, MSP, and so uh, Markell's able to just get ahead of the defense and a nice pass from Ariola to get it up to him and the completion to push the score to 45 to 9. Quarterback DJ Sears back on the field, turns, hands it to the fullback. Good run. A punishing run at the end of that play. It's a 10-yard carry for Caden Christensen. And again, he just lowers his shoulder and goes flying out there. There's a late yeah. flag. There was a little yeah. extracurricular yeah. after that one that time. I think there's two flags down, actually. That may be on the Buffaloes. That could possibly be against Hill. We'll wait and see as they sort this one out. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 91 defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, again, just a little extra curricular activity that time for the Buffs as Jalen Hill is going to be flagged for that one. They'll, they'll move the ball up to midfield. You know, good to see Bryce Xavier Rivera is back on the field for the Buffs, number 74, after going out with the injury on one of the illegal blocks. So the clock will continue to run. We're down to 5.38 left to play. Third period. Option to the left. Flip again to Quintero on the outside. Man, he's got some speed. Good seven, eight-yard run to the edge. Taylor Hickerson. And also for the Buffaloes, 
Actually, Terrence Clark on the stop. Yeah, nice seven-yard pickup on the scamper. And make it eight-yard, eight-yard. Carson on Otworth, it. one of the other players in for the Buffaloes, playing the safety spot. Yeah, that's the fun thing of these games, get a lot of players in today. Christensen, man, he ran tough. Picked up the first down, needed to get to the 40, got to the 39. Dylan Hoffricker came up to try and help make the stop. Coming out is Terrence Clark. He got kind of got popped in the arm, and so they're going to attend to him. Well, one thing you know with Bethel College, they're, they're going to continue running hard, whether it's Christensen or Scurry, bringing these different fullbacks, and they run north and south. They just have not been able to sustain their offensive drives, and that has resulted in only nine points. Quarterback cuts it inside. Good run. A penalty marker thrown at the end as, again, all kinds of craziness going on. Xavier Rivera, his helmet gets taken off, and then he ends up flipping one of the players over his shoulder at the end. And now it's it's starting to look too much like pro wrestling. They need to get Xavier calmed down as he was having words with one of the wide receivers for Bethel College. Hunter Hughes comes in and says, Xavier. Well, and, and that's the thing. The receiver, there's nothing. he wasn't even involved in the play. No point in going over saying anything. Well, if I'm a receiver, I'm just, first of all, I'm not going to say anything to Xavier exactly. Rivera. Exactly. That's one. <laughs> 300 pounder because when he gets his helmet on and sits out of play he's going to come back in there and maybe looking for you Holy a little bit offense number 63 10 yard penalty first down and after all that it was a holding penalty against their offensive line and so they'll mark this one off Ryan Junkmeyer. There's a reason why they call it the battle in the trenches, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and it is. I mean, it's fun. You know, it's fun for us to watch and, and watch that when you're watching a football game, how the linemen kind of interact with each other a little bit. And so, and yeah, sometimes it's an emotional game and emotions do kind of take control. So A.J. Magruder going to come back in and play defensive line again. Sears wants to throw great protection. Now he'll scramble to the left. That's going to be another holding penalty as he's taken down hard at the end of that one by Hoffer Richter. But that was clearly another hold offensively by Bethel College. And, and credit the lineman, I think it was Samote, was, that, was he the one that was out there that he sold it to the official that it was a holding penalty? And I mean, it really was, but he sold it as he kind of threw his arms up in the air as we watch the replay here. Yeah, like the top of your screen. Yeah. And so he's grabbing him from behind, and he sold it to the official. That's why they didn't have a choice but to throw the flag. So they mark this one off a little deeper back, back into Thrasher territory at the 45-yard line. They've got to get to the 29. 26 yards here to pick up a first down. Again, for Bethel College, head coach Terry Harrison, great season for the Threshers, a 9-1 and one overall record. But today, run into a team that's just uh, deeper and more talented in the Buffaloes. Handoff to Christensen, gains just a couple up the middle. And that's sometimes you just want to stabilizing for your offense after getting two back-to-back -back penalties. Let's go back to something that's simple and let's run it just straight ahead. Do a straight-ahead dive, give it to the fullback, and see what he can get back. And Ulster comes up to make the stop on that one as well. And Cole's had a good game today from that linebacker spot. So Sears will go under center. They go option to the left. Hoffer Richter will come up and make the stop after Mario Quintero gains decent yardage back so across midfield into buff territory. So one of the adjustments to the WT has done defensively in this ball game because of the option. So usually everybody crowds the line, the down linemen, all three are right up there by the football. As you look at them now, they're almost a yard, yard and a half back away from the football. That allows them to get some reading lanes so they can see where that quarterback's going. And a good example that time is they slide down the line. They don't take the option. In other words, they don't take the fake from the quarterback. And once he pitches it, then they're able to continue to slide down and make the stop. Scott Greider is in at fullback. Mario Quintero at the wing. Play clock was running down. And so 
Terry Harrison had to take a timeout. We'll step aside and take one as well. 2.09 left to play, third quarter. And the Buffs lead big, 45-9. to We're back after this timeout on the LSC Digital Network. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program. Well, welcome back to Jayford Field. 209 left to play here in the third quarter. Buffs lead at 45 to 9. WT 467 yards of offense so far in this ballgame. 277 for the Thrashers. And so what's been interesting about that is the Buffs so far in the quarter have only allowed them uh, to get about 70 yards offensively here in the third. And so trying to kind of limit what they could do with this option offense or this flex flex bone, whatever terminology you want to use to describe it a little bit. And here as you look down at your screen, you'll see, again, Eric Collins a little further out than he normally plays. Sears will pass. Throws this one to the far side. Good catch. And then yardage gained up to the 40 one yard line catch on the outside made by Cameron Harrison he's been a fun player to watch today whether he's been carrying it or catching the ball you know one of the things we talked to Michael McBroom about a little bit too is that transfer portal and and how teams he said you know we can play we talk about all we want but it's who is adapting to it yeah and that's one of the things when you have a game like this is from a football standpoint you look at a couple of their players to see maybe you know, they may be ones wanting to move on later on as well. So a punt coming back to the Buffaloes here. This time they protect the punter, Tobias Harris. Fair catch made inside his own 10-yard line, and we'll see the Buff offense coming on the field. Caleb Areola, obviously with the big touchdown pass. The last time the Buffs had the offense out, I expect to see some run. Uh, obviously, this clock continue to, to whittle it down. But again, you said it, Bryce. This is a great opportunity for a lot of these younger players to get in and uh, make something of their their time today. Yeah, the last home game of the season, so a good opportunity to impress coaches getting ready for next year. Obviously, for spring football when they come out and do some different things, and so uh, take advantage of the opportunities when they come your way. On first down. And off up the middle, about a two, three yard gain at time for Isaiah Smallwood. Smallwood, the freshman, kind of COVID redshirt freshman uh, out of Austin, Texas. Three rushing touchdowns this year, including a 22 yarder last week against Midwestern State. He has good speed. Timeout taken again by. Timeout. Bethel, their second timeout. Timeout by Bethel College. We'll step aside. Just 49 seconds left here in the quarter. Buffs leading big, 45 to 9. Well, Terry Harrison calls the timeout as he saw they only had 10 defensive players back that time. They had five of them, and they have five again lined up as safeties, basically, and so uh, had several deep. This is a carry by Smallwood. Good run. Look at this bruising run up the middle. Isaiah Smallwood with the signal after that big play there. Move those chains. Well, and again, as we talked about, a good opportunity for a player like Isaiah to, to you know, show the coaches the, the tenacity he has when he's running the football. A spin move, and then he finished it off with some power. This buff offensive line has been so good all day long. 
Ariola looking the far side, throwing it down there, and nearly a big play. Kenneth Red Jr., the intended receiver. Good coverage by Bethel College. Stops the clock with 20.3 seconds left here in the quarter. Buffs in front, 45 to 9. And again, it was Bethel who got on the scoreboard to take the early lead, 6 to 3 over WT as the Buffs drove in their opening drive to get a three point field goal. There's Trey Palmer on the coverage. Smallwood, what a big hole for him to run through that time up to the 31 yard line. So a seven yard run that should take us to the fourth quarter as the clock winds down. Buffs lead this one 45-9 over Bethel College. And we will come back with fourth quarter That's action. The end of the third quarter. Here from Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. Don't go anywhere. We're back after these messages. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field. Jump around if you feel like it. That's what we're doing here at the stadium with the Buffs leading this one. 45 to 9 over Bethel College. Again, Bethel comes in with a record of 8 and 1, or yeah. 9 and 1, excuse Everybody me. Everybody loves this, Bryce. The band <laughs> loves it. Maroon Platoon loves it. There's some of the redshirt players. Players love it. They're jumping around on the sideline. I don't think Bethel's used to this. They're not jumping but, around. There's Hunter Hughes even jumping around his head. <laughs> Which he told us earlier in the season, he said, that's maybe the best picture I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think his mom was proud of that one. Well, and again, talk about Hunter and the Maroon Platoon. He was so excited after the game against Midwestern last week. He goes over there, climbs up in the stadium, in the seats, I should say, with the Maroon Platoon, just high-fiving all the fans over the students. He just appreciates their support so much. In at wide receiver for the Buffaloes, Blake Waters. He split to the far right. Hunter Kaufman in the slot. On third down and three as we start quarter number four. WT, big lead over Bethel College, 45 to nine. And they're going down the field, taking a shot for Hunter Kaufman. They're going to throw a flag. That was, I, I, at first thought, first glance, Bryce, I thought it was pretty good coverage by the corner that time, Philip Williams, the safety, excuse me, but maybe some holding. Well, it looked like he grabbed his jersey as he started to break away from him. He looked like he grabbed a jersey, and that's where that flag came in. And so the official's talking Passing about it. Number one, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. I mentioned some of the new linemen. Jeremiah Stanley is out there as the center. Right now, Morgan Pink uh, pitches Pinkett. out there along with Zach Dietrich. And so some different guys out there for the Buffaloes. Brandon Lesh also in at right tackle. And Grayson Williams, number 56, is uh, in at the left tackle spot. Buffs do not lose a single offensive lineman in terms of uh, seniors this year. Here's Smallwood. He continues to run hard, and then the pile gets pushed forward. That's going to be a seven-yard run for Isaiah Smallwood. Rice, uh, we were talking about the Lone Star Conference scores. One game uh, that is underway besides <laughs> ours. A surprise in Wichita Falls. Maybe it's early, 8:32, still to play in the first quarter, and the Falcons of UT Permian Basin have a two-touchdown lead. Makes you think they probably got a turnover, turned that into a score, and then able to get their offense out there as well. And so, yeah, they have that early lead and maybe a hangover for Midwestern State from losing last week to the Buffs. Here's second down and four. Smallwood hesitates, 
And then again, just powers his way yeah. up to the first down marker. Nicely done. He needed to get to the 44, and that's exactly where he got. He got stopped at about the 48 and then just kept his feet churning and yeah. able to pick up the first down. Well, this buff offense, Bryce, uh, Jer Jordan Johnson, he's gone the next season, uh, a senior. Jared Compton, also a senior. Brandon Blair, a senior. We haven't seen Khalil Harris uh, in the last three games. He's been out with an injury, and so this is Isaiah Smallwood uh, getting an opportunity to make a case to uh, be moved up in the depth chart starting next season. Well, absolutely. And, again, that's what he, one of the things you want to do here late in the ball game is to show the coaches what you can do. And Isaiah doing that right now. That time he ran into the back of his center, Jeremiah Stanley. He was trying to open up a hole, but he just got popped into him and couldn't continue to move forward. Clock continues to run. Nearing the 13-minute mark, fourth quarter action. Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets, director today. Jamie Abbott, glad to have you with us for the broadcast. It's been all buffs. Areola in trouble, escapes. And look at Caleb Areola with some speed down the side and out of bounds after a big first down. We knew the lefty could throw, Bryce. But now, again, he got some elusive ability. And again, that time, nicely done. He rolls out to his left. Watch here as he just rolls to his left, gets away from the pressure. Now he has open green, so he takes off, tucks it under the right arm, and then takes it out of bounds as he picks up a big first down for the Buffaloes. Smallwood will stay in at running back. Three receivers to the far side. They give it to Isaiah Smallwood. Isaiah Smallwood runs through a linebacker and has a gain of 10 yards. First and goal, Buffaloes. Yeah, nice job that time as he just takes it, goes off the right side, and then just keeps churning forward and picks up 10 on that to make it first and goal to go. They work quickly. Smallwood over the right side, and this time Bethel College was ready, better penetration defensively. Is Coming up 90, to make the stop defensively that time is Josh Seabolt. Again, the linebacker, very talented linebacker for Bethel College. Uh, and, and Jared Compton back into the game. We'll see if the senior from Lubbock Coronado gets into the end zone. It's going to be a pass, though. And intended receiver, I believe, was Blake Waters. He was kind of jammed up, couldn't get uh, released to try to go get that football. So the incomplete pass will set up third and goal. Well, the, the thing you could do, you can jam him up for five yards, and that's basically get that five-yard threshold to kind of keep control of him, and that's... He was complaining to the official that he thought he got held, but the thing is it was within that five-yard scope, and so official just says no penalty, and we'll go back and run it again. Jared Compton does get it, and Jared Compton with a juke to the left, juke to the right, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. Nice job again. Jared just shows that elusibility as well. As he goes to his left and back to the right and then kind of sidesteps a tackler and is able to take it in to score his second touchdown of the ball game. They had the dance cam up earlier. That was Jared <laughs> Compton's dance moves on display right there for a touchdown. For Jared Compton, third rushing touchdown this season. The extra point from Paula Voda is good. The route continues. WT extends the lead. 52 to 9, 11.25 to play in the fourth quarter. Another look at Compton's run here. Again, just watch him step to the right, plant his foot, go back to the left, and then just takes it in for the score. And just, again, how shifty he is when he moves even up the middle. It makes it tough, but he's still able to do it. We're back after these messages here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. WT student-athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. 
Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Well, that was a 12-play drive that took 4 minutes, 51 seconds off the clock as the Buffs take it from the set third quarter into the fourth quarter, and they're able to get in the end zone on a four-yard Jerry Compton TD run. Here's Mario Quintero from his own 13-yard line, quickly gets up to the 30-yard line, mark him down to 31. Mario Quintero, he's had a good game today for Bethel College, one of the Scat backs, 10 carries, 62 yards. Heston Marshall in on that stop, picks up the running back. It takes him down to the turf, and so kind of remember his linebacking days, and so able to come in and help make a stop on that special teams play. He's had an impact this year. Bryce is a true freshman. He's the type of player that you don't know exactly what position he's going to end up uh, fitting into, but you feel like he's going to help the Buffs in his career for sure. Yeah, absolutely. He's, again, kind of one of those guys – you can use a five-tool guy, you use a lot of different ways. On first down, here's a big run. Ten-yard gain right up the middle. Ayrton Payne comes up to help make the stop. That was Christensen. He's a little bigger than Ayrton, so credit to Ayrton for stepping in and making that stop. Does get a first down run out of it. Great to see Ayrton out there, as we talked about earlier after getting injured in last week's ball game. Hunter Hughes said on Thursday night, Ayrton Payne, the epitome of what type of player he wants to recruit here for West Texas A&M. New quarterback in for Bethel College. It's Joshua Moran, his pass well off the mark, incomplete. Well, it's the same thing for Bethel College, too. They could get some of their younger players in who made the trip as well, and so they get an opportunity to come and play. And so you get to see what they look like as you get ready. Obviously, they're set at quarterback for a while with D.J. Sears, only a freshman. That's one of the nice things for them, too. I mean, they've got him for four years, and he obviously knows the offense right now. Here's Quintero just trips before he can get back to the line of scrimmage, so he's going to lose a yard. Good penetration again for the Buffs. Eric Collins still in there and enjoying this senior day. Loss of a yard. A lot of other young linebackers, though, in there with him as well to watch his veteran presence. Eric Collins out of Cedar Hill, Texas, Bishop Dunn High School. And again, last week uh, passed Carter James to move into third all-time on the tackles list. Buffs will miss his playmaking ability on that outside linebacker spot for sure. And that one short gain. And again, some words exchanged after that play. You know, the thing that the, the Buffs have done defensively, they've pretty much taken Chance Scurry out of the game too and Chance their leading rusher. And so he really hasn't been in to make a big impact. He does have 13 carries for 63 yards in today's ball game, but just hasn't really been able to get loose to run with the football. And that brings a fourth down on a punting situation. Back to the heavy package for the punter. <laughs> and this is a great punt. Tobias goes all the way back to his own seven yard line. He's got a chance though. Tobias up at the 25, stays in bounds, hit hard from behind as a pinning marker flies. Good pursuit on that special teams play for Bethel College. Give credit to number 43, which is Conlon Brugman. Well, again, Tobias had that deep, deep in Buffalo territory is able to bring it out. Now we'll see what the penalty is going to be. Block in the back, number 38, return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and 10. We've got a, do we have a media timeout? We. We do. We do. So we'll step aside, be right back after these messages. 904 to play, 52 9 Media buffs with the lead. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. 
The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Well, we told you coming into this one today that Bethany, uh, Bethel College, excuse me, averages about 505 yards per ball game offensively. And the Buffs have done a nice job so far keeping them at 296. The Buffs have 544 total yards in this ball game offensively today. And so that's something that's going to make the coaching staff happy. The other thing, too, penalty wise, Buffs have only gathered three penalties so far in the ball game compared to eight for Bethel College. And so, again, uh, the Buffs uh, kind of taking advantage of several things in this one today. We'll see more of Isaiah Smallwood running back. Big hole opens up Smallwood. Runs hard, another first down, a gain of 11 yards. Buff offensive line, even the second team coming in and really moving bodies. And this has been a unit. You go back, you think about Hunter Hughes and his uh, time here with WT Bryce from the opening season when we went to the spring practices and, and you said, Hunter, do we have enough guys out there at offensive line? And a lot of them were underweight. Right. And to what we have now with uh, big linemen, a lot of depth, guys transferring in, Division One players, offensive line a staple of this program. Yeah, absolutely. And, again, they're showing evidence of that today. Smallwood starts up the middle, cuts left, and is going to gain about three yards. Again, just following that line. Pinchu the last time opened up a hole. That time trying to do the same thing was Jeremy Stanley, the center. And so, again, and that's what the coaching staff wants to do right now. They want to let the clock run. We're leading 52-9 to nine here on the last home game of the 2021 campaign. Byron blasting game, the defensive end, along with Josh Seabolt, the linebacker, in on the stop for Bethel College. Second down and seven for the Buffs. Keep it on the ground. Smallwood makes nice moves and is going to get a Buffs first down near midfield. Got that out to the 49-yard line, got into the second level and made the secondary come up and make the stop. And so, again, the offense able to kind of suck the linebackers up in, and that leaves some big running lanes for Smallwood to run through as he gets to that second level. Okay, we're going to see Heston Marshall come in and get his chance, the six foot 175 175-pound true freshman out of Wheeler, Texas. They fake it to him, throw it to the outside to Waters, who makes the catch, and then is cut down after a short gain. Good tackle on the outside for Bethel College. So Blakey would come up with that one there after he picks up two. And again, nice play action that time for Caleb or Areola. That was Denzel Dixon, number two on the stop. Well, Denzel was one of those who got burned on that last Areola touchdown pass, and so they don't want to get burned again. Buffs work that play clock down under 10 seconds. And Areola will hand it off to Marshall straight ahead. Not much going. Good penetration. Seabolt along with number seven, Ryan Clark, to make the stop. The receiver... Coming in for the Buffs, I was trying to see who that was. Make sure I got the right number, 86. <laughs> Not sure who 86 is. Uh, for Bethel College? No, for WT. For WT. We don't have an 86. <laughs> I know, that's what I was looking to see. <laughs> Who's 86 that came in? 
It's right here. The slot. Yeah, you're right. This is a handoff and Marshall. Well, there's a face mask, too. And so, yeah, that's where the flags come in. He was only he stopped for actually a loss. But if that penalty is what you saw, it's going to be a buff first down. Yeah, as soon as he was going down, the tackler face mask. reached his face defense. mask and pulled it down. 15-yard so. penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. So they'll mark that one off and give the buffs an automatic first down. Jordan Johnson was in on that series, comes out. All right, the Mustangs of Midwestern State kick a field goal, and the lead for UT Permian Basin cut to 11, still in the first quarter, a long first quarter there with a 153 to play. And again, uh, more games as the day goes on for I the I think there LSC. were two 1 o'clock starts and a 4 o'clock start today. Eastern New Mexico at Commerce, that game's 4 p.m. start. And then tonight in Kingsville, Angelo State, Takes on the Javelinas. Marshall hit hard and thrown down to the turf. That was penetration by number 52, Doug Greider. If I'm hesitant, I'm going to go back to Huddle and say, man, I like to be in the flat, so <laughs> just throw me a little loop pass out. Get some space, right? Give me some, let me get some running lanes going. And again, very excited coaching staff was for the beginning of this season with Heston and uh, again what he brings to the table from Wheeler, Texas. Buffs have two receivers to the far side of the field and they give to Marshall again. This time he carries a defender and gains yardage to the 34 yard line. So Heston will come out and back in is Isaiah Smallwood. Sterling Henderson, who they list as a defensive lineman, comes in and he will get a chance to go out there on the offensive line. Here's the third down and long play. Three minutes, 45 seconds left in this ball game. And it's Isaiah Smallwood running through one defender. Going to be short of the first down, but he does gain good yardage to the 29. And WT be a long field goal try into the wind. Yeah, that's, I think, what makes the decision is going into this brief, brisk wind that's coming from the southwest. It's kind of changed. It's blowing into the face of WT right now, and so they're going to go for it. We see Bethel College, they've done this a lot today where the defensive line is up and down and the linebackers are moving around. They're about five yards off the ball right now. Looks like an antsy elementary class. There's a throw and it was a dropped pass on the outside incomplete to number 88 uh, for the Buffaloes, which it's another number that's not on the roster <laughs> today. But uh, nonetheless, it'll be a turnover on downs as the ball will go back to Bethel College and they'll have 247 left in this fourth quarter. Well, again, a good win today for the Buffaloes as they lead this one 52 to nine and wanted to end on a high note, seven and four this season. Again, they'll look at that UTPB game and that Western Oregon game. Those are two they feel like they should have come away with victories. Pitch to the outside, Quintero. Loses the ball, and the Buffaloes recover it. Stripped from behind, and the guy coming up with the recovery, number 23, Terrence Clark. Here's the replay. Again, here's the option pitch right there. Eric Collins Eric forces Collins it. Eric Collins comes up. <laughs> of course he does. I, I tell you, Eric Collins comes up and forces that one. Probably the last time he'll be out on the field today. 238 left to play, and what a way to end your career on a forced fumble. Eric kind of nonchalantly just goes to the bench and sits down, talks to a couple of fans behind him. Well, for his career, Bryce, coming into today, you mentioned the tackles, 308 career tackles, 48 starts at WT, 
uh, started every game since his freshman season. 2019 first team all LSC. That was his ninth forced fumble of his career. And that's one of the things he is such a fun player to watch. Like I said, he leads by example out there for the buffs. The clock continues to run with 220 left to play in the ball game. So this is going to be a great finish to the season for WT. They're going to get a, a seventh win. The overall record will go to seven and four. And then you and you just become uh, a watcher today. And again, Bryce, a lot of this depends on needing uh, Midwestern State to lose, needing Angelo State to lose, and then you really start watching uh, the region rankings. Right. And can you slide up into that? There's a big run. Isaiah Smallwood, as he gets the first down, they'll move the chains. As he gets that across the 25 to the 24-yard line. So a nice run by Isaiah Smallwood. So it continues to keep the clock running with 135 left to play in the ball game. A reminder, we've got a lot more coming your way today on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. West Texas A&M Lady Buff Volleyball Team will have a very important match against Dallas Baptist. Lady Buffs will try to stay perfect at the box this season. And then later today, the, uh, tonight I should say, West Texas A&M Lady Buff basketball team will take on Colorado Mesa. Buffs will down it a few times and that'll be all she wrote. You're gonna get Brandon Blair back on the field one more time, senior. So, Satchel Escalante is playing quarterback. Why not, Bryce? <laughs> let, let it go, right? Let these, sen the let these seniors have some fun. And yeah, there are a bunch of them out there right yep, now. Jordan yeah. Johnson's out there. Let's just get Eric Collins out there. Let him split out at wide receiver. Again, the, the seniors have done so much for this program, and you said it in the pregame, Bryce, not just for what they've done on the field, but right. for uh, the leaders that they have been in the community. We appreciate these young men, and I know their families are extremely proud of what they have done their career here in canyon texas that is going to do it the teams will come out head coaches will shake hands and it is going to be a happy send-off here for the west texas a&m seniors as they're going to win this one by the final score of 52 to 9 over bethel college yeah nice win here at home for the seniors and a bunch of the seniors out there right now and getting their photo taken and so Again, just a pleasant win for the Buffs here on their last one at home today. Buffs are going to move to 7-4. and four. All Bethel College will finish its season at 9-2. and two. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll start the postgame show, wrap things up from Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium where the Buffs get a big win today over the Threshers. We're back after this. Days are built on mornings, and Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings, burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm, yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast, topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. 
So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium as the uh, seniors celebrating out on the field, taking pictures with their teammates and family members. And Bryce, this is exactly how the Buffs wanted the season to end. You know, absolutely. A nice, pleasant fall afternoon. The Buffs get behind early. Actually, they got the early lead three to nothing. Got behind six to three. And then really from there, it was all WT from then on out as they made the right adjustments, able to stop the running game, even though. Um, uh, Bethel was able still to get close to 300-some yards offensively. They held them about 200, 180 yards under their norm. And so, again, with this explosive offense, that was a nice job of adjusting during the course of the game for the WT defensive side of the ball. And offensively, they just really moved it well. Very efficient. Nick Gerber looked really good. Maybe possibly his best game of the year. I yeah. don't know. I mean, he just played really – looked very fluid. Uh, moving the football this well, and the Buffs were able to run the football so effectively that that really loosened up that secondary. You saw Buff receivers getting open, uh, Bogardus, Tyree Tipton, Caleb Olison, who had a touchdown catch as well. So, a great day for the offense. And then, in turn, you mentioned at the defense. Once they kind of had that first drive and they figured out, all right, here's what's going on with this fullback dive, this option, the quarterback keep. Everybody started doing their job, and then it became disruptive. Eric Collins was disruptive throughout yes. the day. Uh, the secondary did a good job, obviously. But that defensive front, that's where it started today against this option. Of yeah, they College. forced turnovers. They had an interception, forced a, f a couple of fumbles uh, in this one as well. And so then the Buffs offense able to take advantage of that. And, again, I'll go back to what Hunter Hughes said at the half, is we want to limit – the number of times that Bethel has the football because they know what kind of offense they have. So you do that by causing turnovers, and the Buffs able to take advantage of that. Final score, 52-9. to nine. Buffs get the big win. We've got more post game to come. We're going to hopefully get an interview with head coach Hunter Hughes and also one of the Buffs seniors to join us as well. Buffs victorious today on Senior Day over Bethel College. We'll step aside and be back with more of the post game activities after this. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy. Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our Health Mart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. 
For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. And welcome back to Jayford Field. As we look at the highlights, here is a nice run into the end zone by Jordan Johnson. That's one of his two touchdowns early today. And again, the senior taking advantage of a big open lane to run through. Here's Ayrton Payne, the senior, coming up to block this punt. And again, so effective on special teams throughout his career. Shows another example right there as Ayrton comes up and makes the block. And then here back is Areola as he will roll out to his left, look up, and finds Markel Stevens Peppers all alone as he backs into the end zone for another WT touchdown as they were comfortably taking advantage of what Bethel gave him in today's ball game. And here's Areola again on a scamper. This time he it looks like he was going to be dropped in the pocket but got to the outside and then picks up a big first down to keep the drive alive as WT takes advantage there. And then here is Jared Compton taking it in on a nice little dipsy do to get into the end zone for the final WT touchdown of the day as WT wins this one by a count of 52-9. to nine. And here's a defensive play by Eric Collins, another of the seniors, forces the fumble. And that, again, like we said, that was probably the last time we saw Eric on the football field as the offense stayed out there with Sacho Escalante getting the service yep. quarterback to down the football. And so, again, nice. Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? Jay Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guides you every step of the way. That is the Jay Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call Jay Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are Jay Ferg Roofing. We are more. Bud Light, proudly brewed in the heart of Texas. A smile is understood in any language. It represents joy, love, and shows you care. At Full Smile Dental, our mission is to build lifelong relationships one smile at a time by providing accessible, compassionate, quality care with the personal touch of friendship. Come see us at Full Smile Dental, located in Canyon, Amarillo, Dumas, and Dalhart, and ask us about our free Whitening for Life program.
It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Well, welcome back to Jayford Field. Buffalo State, the Buffs win this one 51-9 to over Bethel College. Eric Collins, one of our favorite linebackers, one of our favorite players, is a <laughs> linebacker, you should say. So much fun to watch over the course of his career. Congratulations with the win. And, again, the very last time you're out there on the field, you force a fumble. That probably felt pretty good. It did. I mean, I wasn't really expecting it, but it just kind of happened, so... <laughs> So you stayed, and you stayed out fairly long, too, when they were rotating some other guys in. Was it just to stay and play, just to, to enjoy the afternoon? or? Yeah, I mean, that last play, coach came up to me. He was like, you want one last curtain call? And I was like, why not? I mean, <laughs> the fumble happened, and I yeah. felt kind of bad because the other outside linebacker, he wanted to go out there, you know, play a little bit. And I was just like, man, my bad. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't Eric, be honest, it. how many how many players, how many seniors were down there at, getting at Hunter Hughes, hey, can I get in, go, go run the ball, go get a touchdown? Oh, man, everybody, everybody <laughs> wanted a piece. I wanted a touchdown. Yeah. So. Uh, Eric, third all-time leading tackler for West Texas A&M, yes. did that last week uh, in an impressive performance. So many memories for you, Eric. Uh, you started every game since you came here to WT, but talk about some of the things you're going to remember most uh, in your career being here and being such an impactful player. I oh, man, just playing with my teammates, I mean – Coming in in 2017 and then still being here with Parker, uh -huh. Xavier, and guys like Brandon and stuff, I mean, it's it's almost like a family, my second family. And so I'm really appreciative of, of those guys and just enjoy my time. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that sticks out for you in your playing career? I mean, what's so fun to watch? We, we call you a smooth operator. I, I hope that's okay. <laughs> because just you play so smoothly out on the field. And today was interesting because I noticed that you adjusted a little bit. You usually walk up to the line and you, you like to make something happen. But today you played further out because it looked like you guys are trying to funnel them toward the middle. Yeah. So, I mean, I want to say probably 2019, playing with that 2019 team. And then even with this team, I mean, after Western New Mexico or Western Oregon or whatever that loss, I think it created a stronger co cohesion within our uh, program and, I mean, you saw it, the turnovers and stuff, everything increased defensively. So, well, well, And let's yeah. stay with that point because it seems like from that ball game on, the defense has gotten better each and every week. And so is it the communication? Is it the way you guys are practicing? Or is it just that bond that you guys have kind of formed here to end up with the season? All three. I mean, the communication, the bond that we have, and then trusting each other. I mean, that played a big part. And so after that, I mean, we saw our potential. So. 
Talk about some of the guys you play with, some of the younger guys that are out there too. Chris Thomas, he's a fun guy to watch. Oh, yeah. as well. we, we say Chris loves these these type of games. Whenever a team's just going to run it, yeah. run it, run it. Chris is like this. This is great. Yeah, man. Chris and JT, man. <laughs> these games, they love them. Live for it. Literally live for it. So you're the smooth operator. Those guys, I don't know if I would say smooth. They're great players, but they're more of that like, inside they do the dirty work. Smash mouth. Yeah. Talk about those guys up front, too. You're talking about Xavier getting to play with him, obviously. But just you talk about the dirty Jaylen work. Those Hill. are the guys, yeah. Jalen Hill, Xavier, the guys that go up there and, and really force everything out to you guys. And yeah. so how they get – maybe they're underappreciated. I don't know how you look at them, but talk about those three guys up front. I mean, they're definitely underappreciated, especially I think – I was telling somebody on, on the sideline, I was like, look at the D-line. They're having so much fun because they were over there communicating <laughs> and stuff. Jumping up and down, I'm like, they love stuff like this, the triple option, they love it. And I mean, I, if you go back and look at uh, Midwestern game, they yeah. played a huge role in that. Yes. So they're yes. definitely underappreciated. Talk about what's for Eric Collins after football. What's some of the things you'd like to see happen in your life? I know you're finishing up college and everything else, but what's the next steps for you? Graduating first, and yeah. then hopefully, I mean, if the chance at the NFL sure, comes, sure. then I'm, I'll take it. But if not, I plan on coaching. So, Well, let's just give a plug for this guy, too. I mean, yes. not just a linebacker. He's played corner before. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very, very talented uh, athlete. And so, uh, Eric, you, you have been a part of uh, this, this program, kind of set the standard, carried the torch, if you will, from that linebacker spot. What do you hope that some of those younger players uh, have learned from you as a, a captain, a leader, and a veteran? I oh, man, just go out there and play and have fun. I think that's the biggest thing. I tell guys all the time, if you're out there overthinking and stuff, you're not going to play how you want to play. So if you go out there, just prepare, and then when you go out there, just have fun. Don't even think about anything. Just yeah. let it come to you naturally. Just react. Just and react. Just use what your talent lets you do. Yeah, right? and that's the most important thing. So. Yeah. Well, it has been a lot of fun for us to watch you over the years. So congratulations on a great career. Congratulations on a big win. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we get uh, back, we're going to get Hunter Hughes in and let uh, your head coach hopefully brag about you a little bit. We'll find out why Eric didn't get uh, that quarterback sneak right in the fourth quarter. But, <laughs> yeah, we'll be back right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. are built on mornings and Whataburger is built on burgers mornings burgers morning burgers hmm yeah all right good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast topped with breakfast the limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger well, welcome back to Jayford Field, Buffalo Stadium. The Buffs win this one 51-9. to A happy Hunter Hughes joins us on the postgame show. 52-9. to 52-9. Did yeah. I say 51? 52. I can't even read. You got all it's, these guys uh, kicking extra points. You yeah, got lost. I you? know. That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> four different kickers out there yeah. today kicking it. And obviously some adjustments were made early in this one, and then the offense just kind of started taking over from there. Uh, you know, playing that offense, it's hard. you can't replicate what they do. Um, in practice, and we thought we had a good plan going. Um, we scooted, we played a three-three stack, and moved our uh, after the second series, moved our inside or outside backers up a little bit. But we were just getting beat on the edge. I mean, they were blocking us on the edge and taking, uh, blocking the guy who had to pitch man. And um, so finally, we just started attacking it. And uh, their uh, receiver was coming across and and cracking our. Uh, our, our pitch guy, and we told our corners all week, stay deep, stay deep, uh, come up on the run, and um, and that's how they broke some yards on us first. But, you know, you have to be perfectly sound on every single play to do that. And if one guy gets blocked, big plays can happen, and they had some big plays, which we didn't expect. Um, but I thought that our offense, uh, I was disappointed. We had so many field goal attempts. Um, you know, whether we made him or not, I th I, you know, we just got to keep finishing. But I thought a big turning point was the onside kick. We had it, and, you know, Coach Wagner runs our special teams, and he asked me about it. I'm like, if we got it, run it. That's why yeah. we practice it. And 
and he waited till the wind was we had the wind and that was executed perfectly by Mauricio and and uh, Heston caught it you know two yards past where he should have so it was good yeah and that really did kind of change the, that and then turnovers too being able to force turnovers a couple of fumbles interception in today's ball game and so and I know you talked with Ken at halftime about limiting their opportunities yeah. and that's what turnovers does yeah. it gives you the ball back well we had to steal you know so that's what that onside kick was we had to steal a position um you know, anytime you run that type of offense, uh, the ball is loose because you're you're holding it out and the fullback's mm-hmm. taking it and who's going to carry it and getting it back into your body as a quarterback. Uh, and Eric Collins did a heck of a job. He probably had three strip fumbles today um, with his long arms coming and, and getting around him and hitting that. So, uh, you know, Ty had a great you know interception over there and you know, we were basically challenging him to throw the ball right. because we know that's not what they do. And, right. Uh, um, you know, I don't. What did he throw it six times? Eight times, I think. Eight times, one, yeah. which is their average. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we got one of them. Yeah. So I don't know how many they caught. Eric, one of the uh, eleven seniors that were honored before the game, Hunter, and so I just want to give you a chance to to talk about these guys. Bryce said it in the pregame. You know, we we had a lot of respect for these young men, not only for what they did on the football field for your program, but also what they did in the community as well. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of like I've told y'all and told everybody is you you're not going to appreciate them fully until they're gone. And, um, you know, it was fun watching Eric play out there. It was fun watching, you know, Jalen and Xavier and Eric Pop and Payne and Jordan, of course, getting out there. You know, those – and Jared Compton and, and Brandon Blair, uh, everybody contributed. And um, Brady Ellsworth got him into kicking mm-hmm. uh, some extra points. And um, Mauricio finally got him into kicking an extra point. So Satchel Escalante was quarterback. S- Satchel – <laughs> Uh, and our, our, tra- our trainer, Luke Casper, is, is so irate at me right now because Satchel probably shouldn't have been in. But I said, just going to take a snap. It, it's something he'll remember. I've done that before. Yeah. I did that at Pueblo and didn't tell anybody. I had a guy that you know, tore his knee up, was going to get his first start, and I put him in for the first play before he had surgery, and he went and made the tackle. And everybody was looking at me when in the trainer was <laughs> – ticked and the head coach like what the hell is he doing in there I'm like just let him play a play and he went and made the tackle and came off and he had tears in his eyes and I was yeah. like you know let's, for uh, life. let's do that for a second let's, oh, yeah. Yeah. so I said Satchel can you go back there and catch the, yeah coach I can do that and I said here's the cadence I got Nick over teaching the cadence put him back there and he about fumbled the first one <laughs> so he, and, uh, <laughs> he said coach I gotta admit I was nervous I was so nervous but you know he, he when it was all over I was going out to shake hands with coach Harrison and, and Satchel came over to me and Gave me a hug. And, yes. You know, I told him I loved him. He told him he loved me. And, yeah. you know, that's something he'll never forget. Yeah. And, you know, if, if that's Luke getting mad at me, then I guess I'll have Luke get mad at me if I can make a kid happy like that. So. Well, the nice thing about that, too, is, of course, we don't get the interaction that you have. Obviously, if you bring these young men in here and you watch them come in as youngsters and then they leave here as men with a degree and everything else. And so it's that – that bond that you have with them and the coaching staff has with them that has been developing over the course yeah. of all these years. I, I, I saw Eric Collins' dad before our meetings and stuff, and uh, he gave our coaching staff the greatest compliment. And it, it really – and I told this to the team. I didn't tell him it was Eric Collins' dad. I said, but uh, he told me, he said, I dropped my, my my boy off here. He was a young boy. He said, and today – He's a man. He yeah. goes, I appreciate that, uh, everything you and your coaching staff did. And, you know, you can take wins, losses, all that kind of stuff. I mean, and it's hard to win a football game, but that's why we do it. Yeah. You know, we do it for to help develop them. And I told him all today, I said, I hope that you being in this program has helped you become a better husband when you get married, become a better father to your kids by what we've taught you, and become a better man. And to me – if they can come back in three to five years and say, you know, they might say, Coach, now I got it. Yeah. yeah. I'm still going to be. I was like, I yeah. wish you'd have gotten it when you were here. <laughs> but, you know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And I've been lucky to have a lot of guys come back and tell me that. Um, and uh, But that comment meant the world to me, and I share it with our coaches, and uh, should mean the world to our coaching staff as yeah. well. You get the win today, and so the final record right now stands seven and four. So explain to Bryce and I, and maybe the viewers as well, uh, that outside chance that so the Buffs get into postseason. Right here. No, well, <laughs> we still the have a chance. The Buffs have zero chance to get the postseason. Zero chance. There it is. Zero chance to get the playoffs. Okay. Uh, there's still a chance for us to uh, share or have tiebreakers 
and win the Lone Star Conference. Okay. Right. So that's all. So I'll we'll, say we'll be watching uh, <laughs> the scores throughout the day. Let's just say I, I might throw up when I say this, but go Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's hard. Me, to, me, that's a bitter pill to swallow. Oh, man. I can't oh, did that just come out of my mouth? It did. Oh. It did. We'll but, edit that out, okay? Oh, God. You didn't tell them where to go. You just said go, Falcons. That's right. So that's, yeah, deep know. down I'm telling them where to go. <laughs> I can't do that on air. I know. I know. Buffs, Buffs get the win today, 52-9. to nine. Congratulations, uh, Hunter Hughes and the Buffaloes on a great yeah. season. And uh, we'll see what happens as the day goes on. I want to thank our Thunder Vision team for their outstanding work throughout the season, not just today, but our camera operators today, Andrew Mangum, Jacob Johnson, Daniel Kalunga, also uh, Emma McReynolds and Peyton Stokes. Your replay operator today was Jacob Griffin, director Jamie Abbott. A big shout out as well to Chris Jaquis uh, for all of his hard work this season and also Chance Haugen. Today's broadcast was brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau. Final score again, 52 to 9. Buffs get the win over Bethel College. Thanks so much for watching all season long right here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Roll damn buffs. <laughs>